what you want to kill me. Now you want to kiss me. Blow. <laughs> I'm going to amp this baby up. See how it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, this is Democracy Manifest. This is the fake Shep.net podcast. Thank you for listening. It's nerdy cinematic ramblings. I'm Glenn and I'm here with Jared. I'm here. I'm present. I'm sick. So if I cough every now and again, I apologize, but I'm here and heavily medicated. You can cough on me. That's all right. All right. I'm well protected. I'm wearing my uh, lubricated shield. <laughs> I want to. I want to just get something yeah. off my chest because it's really pissed me off this week. Okay. Um, this week, uh, Russell Crowe's The Water Diviner was broadcast on yeah, on television, night. right? Yeah. And it's caused such a stir. We are you know in with a lot of film mm. people, and we've had people on Facebook just crying out that it's ruining you know the fucking film industry. That you know, mm. how do they expect people to go to the cinemas when this is happening? Blah blah blah. But the thing was, it got a theatrical unboxing day. Right, but and what? it's had a long enough window theatrically, and then oh. it came out in home. What I would like to well, the thing is, the, how long's it been on home? End? Well, the issue a month, two months, Oh, uh, about three weeks, roundabout. Yes. Yeah, wow. that was the issue, right? Wow. It had been released, and then all of a sudden, it's on television. But what I would say to people mm. is, consider the fact that it's a Channel Seven production. They produced yes, it. Absolutely. So it's they, a mystery road that screened yeah. on ABC before it even hit. All right, so that gives, them, that gives them exclusivity to broadcasting. And, and really, how is that going to affect people going to the cinemas? It people doesn't. didn't fucking go to see it. No, right? no that's it. It just really <laughs> pissed me off. The thing, too, that I will raise is that when typically when these films are broadcast on TV, like, I don't know the aspect ratio, say, for Water Divide. I right. it might be getting a bit niggly and technical. But when I watched Mystery Road on the ABC when it aired, in fact, I think I actually watched it on iView, because it was on iView for a good couple of weeks after it aired, it was in an aspect ratio of the film script, which was 178. It's a beautifully shot film, mm. which is one of the few things I took away. I know you were a fan, but one of the few things I took away was I really like the cinematography. Yep. Then it came out in Home End. I watched it on Blu-ray, because it's actually shot in 235 to 1, so it's even prettier landscape. Yeah. Not interrupted. I mean, the ABC broadcast and the iView broadcast wasn't interrupted by ads, but imagine the Channel 7 yeah, screen right. had ads to yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. So it's not the preferred way to watch it. No, but anyway, that pissed me off because, uh, I mean, I these are people that should know better, like, absolutely. seriously. I mean, it's not going to be on catch-up TV. And, and the thing is, now it's been seen by a wider audience of mm. people that probably would never have rented it or gone to see the cinema anyway. That's right. Then we'd be talking to friends going, I'll watch this movie. And how else are they going to watch it now? What are they going to happen? And look, and the movie it. has just opened up in the US and it's yep. apparently doing fairly well in its first week. But, well, that's good. You know, anyway, I, want well, to... I haven't. I still haven't seen it yet. I had intended to watch it actually today as a bit of a yep. Gallipoli sort of thing. But yep, I was, right. I've been here. Anyway, so that's just, I wanted I to get that off my chest. movie instead, Paddington. Oh, <laughs> right. That, yeah, well, cool. Yeah. That's that's coming up on my radar. But um, anyway, what's news with you? Uh, okay, so, well, I'll tell you some stuff that I haven't told you yet was there's been a bit of interest with on Lesbo Gone in the United States. Oh, wow. Yeah. Are you uh, shitting me? I know, no, I've submitted to a bunch of festivals, and the first one to get back to me has said, uh, look, we're interested, but I'm only one person of the judgment. For people for people that haven't mm. listened before, might be new yes. to the show, because I know we have got some new listeners. Explain the, the film. Uh, it's Gone, Lesbo Gone, the untold tale of an unseen film, which is a documentary on Andrew Leibold's film from 2003. Which Lesbo you made. Ago. And I have. I've, I've made the documentary. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so there's a bit of interest in the stage wow. in this one festival, but I was in a bit of a bit of a situation because they've come to me and they've said, "Look, we're interested, but I am only one of the judging panel, mm-hmm. uh, so it has to be cited by a few other people." Sure. But we are interested. But if we were to take your film, could you promise us the US premiere for the film, or at the very least, a Californian premiere? And I was like, well, I'm stoked that they're yeah, interested definitely. anyway. Fuck. But when I started looking at where I've submitted it, it's I've submitted it to a bunch of festivals across the US, some which fall before their mm. screening in late August. So it's sort of like, do I'm, I'm not that girl that's being asked to prom. <laughs> do I say yes because I just want to go to prom? Yeah. Or do I wait for one of the hot guys to ask me to go to prom? You know? Mm. Could I be spending prom night home alone and no one sees the film? Uh, but anyway, so... At You're in point, a deal of a pickle. It is. I mean, I'm happy with the interest. So I've gone back yeah. and I've said, look, you know, could we go maybe West Coast premiere? So you get it entirely so that way I could screen it in the East Coast if it does get picked yeah. up before some others. There's one festival that falls before it that's in June, which I find out next month if it makes it in, which I don't think it will, but could be, could be a very good festival. So anyway, it's one of those weird sort of situations you put in, which is fucking really exciting, really. I'm, 
I'm soaked. They may actually play overseas before it plays again in Australia. That's bloody so, brilliant, man. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So that's that's news. Aside from that, uh, or last weekend I was working on a top secret project. All right. Which you know about. Yeah. Which I can't really say anything about And that swallowed my entire weekend, which meant I didn't get to go to the movies. I didn't get to see any movies, really. I went to the Avengers premiere. That was You must need a really bad dose of antidepressants after that. Oh, man. Like... I just feel like a day lived without watching a movie is not a day lived at all. Oh, so there were actually days without movies. There was days. There was days without movies. And it was, yeah, it was hard. That's the most depressing fucking thing I've ever heard. No, well, when we go through a rapid fire at the end of the program, again, I think my list of films is going to be... Yours is smaller than mine, okay. Absolutely, yeah. It's shamefully, shamefully right. so. Right. Damn. But it's been cold, so I'm claiming shrinkage. <laughs> nice. Well, um, we've also got a special guest coming up on this episode. We do. Um, we'll uh, we'll get to that in a few minutes. But firstly, let's um, let's get to something we do very well, and that is the obscurities. Yeah. Have you got your obscurity prepped and ready to go? I do. Um, you want me to get this? Well, in a second. I okay. mean, for once again, we've got some new listeners. So right. every episode, we bring an obscure title to the conversation, and we. We don't prep each other on the actual title, so it's news to us. Mm. And yeah, you can go first. What? What? Okay, well, my movie got? actually ties in, funnily enough, with the Focus film. Cool. Which I'm sure we can mention yeah. now. The Focus film is Jennifer's Body, which is written by Diablo Cody, who won the Academy Award for uh, writing Juno. That was her first feature film that she won the Academy Award for. Uh, she's also since written Young Adult, which I love, which was also directed by Jason Lightman, who directed Juno. Yeah. And... She, the series creator for United States of Tara, mm-hmm. but she has directed a film. Only one film, and it went straight to DVD here in Australia. Let me guess the title before yes, you go do for this. It. Okay. Um, what's to start with? Letter. P. Coldplay had a song. And they used it on Parachute. The no, close. Very close. You've got the first four letters. Paradise. Paradise. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, and okay. And I haven't this, watched it, but I know yeah. the rest of my family has. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, I watched it. And look, it, actually, you know what? It's weird because this could almost be a guilty pleasure, but I say the only reason it could be a guilty pleasure is because on IMDb, this film is sitting on a 4.9. That doesn't sound it's right. The, well, it's lowest, IMDb, it probably does sound right. Well, yeah, it's Little the lowest rated of any Diablo Cody thing she's been involved in, including our focus film, Jennifer's Body. And she's a divisive name, too. Absolutely. And yeah. the, the weirdest thing about this film, uh, which is why I said, yeah, it could be a guilty pleasure because it's had such poor, you know, sort of... Uh, reception. Yeah, poor reception yeah. worldwide. And yeah, directed DVD and Blu-ray here in Australia. And it was one of those films that... It was on Netflix. And I, mean, I read about it because it just... It came out through Roadshow. It's been recently reissued through Real. And I was like, man, I just haven't seen this Diablo Cody film. And then I looked and it was on Netflix. And I said to Daddy, do you want to film Diablo Cody? Mm. You know, generally like everything she's done. And this is her directing film. I'm going to look it up on IMDb. I'm like, it's a 4.9. She goes, oh. How like, did she go? Oh. Like, as a director? I think she did a really good job. Yeah. I think she did a really good job. I think, look, it's definitely not the best thing she's written. There's no doubt about that. Mm-hmm. But it's um, it's a pretty linear film. Yeah. And uh, But her dialogue, you know, she, she writes really Sharp. smart. And yeah, and real kind of dialogue. I know that there is a bit of an argument that some of the stuff, the kind of conversations people don't have. But I think she has just a great understanding of people and... I have heard these conversations or, mm. or things of that nature. Um, she is a bit of a talent, but a little background on the film. Well, the actors is, uh, well, Russell Brand's in it, in a pretty prominent role. Um, the lead's played by Julianne Ho, I think, or Hugh. I don't know how that surname's pronounced. Anyway, she was she's mainly a musical type of film. Mm-hmm. So she's in um, Rock of Ages, she was in Burlesque, and she was in Footloose, amongst others. Um, also in there's Octavia Spencer, and Octavia Spencer does this incredible, Incredible fucking version of No Surprises by Radiohead. Oh, wow. But yeah, to, much to yeah. the detriment of this Vegas crowd who expected to sing soulful black songs and they don't want to hear her sing some depressing British <laughs> song from the mid 90s. Um, but yeah, the basic story is there's this girl uh, played by Julianne who's hideously scarred um, from a, a plane accident she was in and uh, her family have sued the, and I guess the other families, the people who were in the plane have sued the company responsible because it was a fault with the plane itself. Uh, she's the only survivor, so she's lost all her friends, three of her friends, I think one of them was her boyfriend. And uh, so she's recovered from this. She's asked to speak at a local church. And she's got she's a millionaire because of this payout. And so the church is expecting she's going to put the money into the community. Uh, but instead she gets up, she basically says, there's no God, because if there's a God, he wouldn't have taken all my friends and let me look in 
like this. Right. So you can kind of get yep. fucked. I'm taking the money and I'm going to Vegas. I'm going to do everything I never got to do because, you know, I've been brought up in this really strong Catholic lifestyle and, you know, um, tight-knit community. Mm. So she goes to Vegas and she does all these wild things she wants to do. And it's really much her adventure in Vegas over the course of one evening. And I thought it was funny. It yeah. was charming. It felt real. I fucking, I really dug cool. it. Is it is it an anti-religious film, or is that just no I the just character? It, yeah, look, and I don't, and it's not really spoiling anything because it's such a small element yeah. of it. But really, by the end of the film, I think she does sort of have a re- bit of faith, renewed sense okay. of faith. You know that you know bad things happen, but there's a lot of good in the world. It's what you take out of it. Yeah. But it's great. The, uh, there's supporting cast. Her mother's played by Holly Hunter, who's only in a very brief thing. Start in the end. Nick Offerman from Parks mm. and Rec. Yep. He's in it, and they've shaved his head, so he looks like and no mustache. So he looks like yeah. an old bald man. That's weird. And he's not even funny. Like they don't right. give him funny lines. He just plays it really straight. And he's, he's a kind of he's shit. a funny man. He's a funny man, but yeah. um, he should just be funny. Yeah. Like it's too soon for him to play a normal kind of character sure. in the background of a film that's generally quite funny. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Look, I just thought cool. it was. I thought it was a solid film. It's a good, funny. It's got laugh out loud moments, and it captures Vegas really well. And yeah, Russell awesome. Brand. I love Russell Brand in movies. Like I think the guy. Uh, you know, we spoke about Arthur. I think a couple yeah. weeks ago at the, on the last podcast, even. And I loved him. Get him to the Greek. I think he's charismatic. I really loved fun. him in um, yeah. Centurions. I thought he was fantastic. In I that. still haven't yeah. watched that. That's the remake of the early. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's its own, its own yeah. thing. It's not really so much okay. a remake. But, but yeah. Paradise. I, I strongly yeah, cool. recommend watching. And another thing that works in its favour is it fucking runs at under ninety minutes, like eighty-three nice. minutes or something. I love so a short film. That is a winner. Yeah, you can watch this cool. twice before you watch a lot of other films. Yeah. I had it at home, and um, I know my partner Melissa picked it up and said, right. "Can I watch this?" And I was busy, and I said, "Go for it." You know, yeah, but I yeah, really yeah. now I wish I'd sat there and watched it with her. Totally. Uh, I'm just I'm I've got to get the Blu-ray because cool. I watched it on Netflix, but I want to own it and I want to watch it again. I'm just hoping, but I'm fearful that there is no special feature content. But this right. is something I'd like to see Diablo Cody talk about. So yeah, I might sure. jump on YouTube and watch cool. some interviews. Well, I've, I've got a few copies at, at, at my store, so I might right. bring one home. Oh, and I'm, there you go. I do yeah, it. for sure. Cool. All right. Well, that's an um, awesome choice that you brought to the table. Yeah, and thanks. Let's move on to my little obscurity. Yes. Mine comes from 1982. 1982? 1982. Oh, pleasures from 82. Oh, my God. Well, Imagine this is that was your obscurity. It's not a guilty pleasure is. whatsoever. This is okay. a great film. Um, this isn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, tell me about Well, 1982 is a Disney film. Oh, okay. It stars John Hurt and Bo Bridges. Oh. No? Trying to think of what yeah, it's called? Yeah, okay. no, I'm thinking of one, but I think it's Jeff Bridges, isn't it? Oh, okay, well, this is called Night Crossing. No, I don't know. And not. look, Night this Crossing. is a fantastic film. It's based on a true story about two families who escape from East Germany into West Germany in a homemade hot air balloon. Holy shit. And it's, like I said, based on a true story. Obviously, these are sort of English slash American actors, but they're playing Germans. Right, right. Um, it's a Disney film, so it's got to have that kind of, you know, cross appeal. Mm. Um, look, it's it's an incredibly dark film for a Disney film. I mean, yeah, the opening... when Disney were making those films. Yeah. Like, uh, they were a bit more... Wicked ch- Way, which fucking comes yeah. that one. <laughs> Something Wicked like This Way comes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and... The Black Hole? Yeah, well, they Even did they were lots taking of a lot of risks in that early 80 period. And oh, Return to Oz. Fuck yeah. Yeah, that's Probably right. The darkest um, of the Disney I'm trying to think of um, something. Uh, what's the. Watcher in the Woods. Oh, Watcher in the Woods. Yeah, yeah that is nice. Fucking well, this dark is. Poster. Art, this like. is from that same era where Disney were really challenging. And I remember about a year ago, maybe a little further back, I bought a whole lot of these because I was really yeah. immersing myself. And this is one of them. And look, it's so dark. The opening scene actually has a teenager trying to cross the border and he gets gunned down by the Germans but in a right. bloody fashion there's wow, a really? machine gun he gets like riddled with bullets and the blood flies and I'm like wow. fire out if this came out now yeah. bare minimum M rating so what is the PG in the day was it? yeah I believe so I mean wow. you know remember back then also they didn't particularly <coughs> have ratings you know yeah you know yeah. Um, but this one really dark it's dramatic it's exciting the, um, the escape sequence I mean because they make several attempts that have failed you know, crossing the border, but when they actually get there, and it's no spoiler that they make it, it's kind of that great escape moment type of thing, you know, where it's right. this massive build up to the escape. It's just a fantastic film, and even the um, like the the scenes where they're constructing this secretly, because you know, back then they had the officials coming to all the doors, making sure nobody was doing thing, anything untowards, you know, right, or right. smuggling across the border, and yeah. It's such a really solid film. Wow, that sounds great. And has this had a local release or is it only in the US? No, only, only in the US. I don't even know if it's in um, distribution anymore. I think it's right. one of those, they pumped out a whole lot of yeah. rarities and, and this sort of, you know, then discontinued. Funnily enough, just kind of on topic and off topic, I see, you know how they've got the, I think it's like the Disney Rewards Club or something in the US where you can be 
coming. Yep. Yeah. And they're releasing yep. Return to Oz in the 30th anniversary, but it's only going to be available on Blu-ray through that. Shit. Mob, yeah. So hopefully the local parts pick up, because it always sold on DVD yeah. stores, always. People would always go, the fucking flying monkeys, they fucked me up for life. Well, it's only now that Disney is starting to get back into some challenging family material. You know, Absolutely. back then it was so wonderful to... Yeah. Even the wonderful world of Disney that they used to do, oh, they were yeah, quite yeah. challenging. Even films like Little Spies, you might remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, they were quite <laughs> scary for kids' films. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, it's taken a long time for them to come back around. I think when Michael Eisner took over, it became very soft and... Yeah, yeah. And very bubbly. And... Yeah. Anyway, so that's my obscurity for the week. Lots of remakes, too, of the, the softer shit, like, you know, Freaky Friday. Yeah, like, that's right. Ones that I can't or remember. reboots like Herbie and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Anyway, so that, that, that brings an end to my obscurity. Night Crossing, it's definitely worth looking. By the way, the director of that, um, he made... Do you remember the movie Marty? Oh, the one with... Uh, what's his name? Ernest 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 Ball, Ball, yeah. yeah, and yeah. Um, Kidnap, which was another Disney one. Which is, oh, yes. Uh, with Gabrielle um, Byrne. Gabrielle Byrne. Yeah, you know... Kidnap, no, I'm thinking of the Kevin Bacon one, maybe, called Kidnap. Is no. Called Kidnap? With Courtney Long. <laughs> anyway, I think That's it's fine. time to I think it's time to move on, and we've got a very special guest coming up. So uh, let's move on to that right now. Ah uh, yes, I see that you know your judo well. Alrighty, so our special guest for this episode of uh, the FakeChef.net podcast is the senior graphic designer at Umbrella Entertainment, Mr. Simon Sherry. Welcome. G'day. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. And yes. um, we brought you along to discuss some. Uh, Graphic design work that you've done. Can you tell us a little about a bit about yourself and, and the work that you do? Oh wow. Okay. Well, these days I guess as the uh, designer at Umbrella, a lot of what I do uh, involves the cover art for our home end releases uh, and the occasional theatrical release art as well. Uh, so a lot of the stuff you might have seen, fans of horror may have recently seen the work I did for Reanimator, the two disc edition, and uh, Stuart Gordon's other lovely slimy classic from Beyond. Um, also various other t- titles, you know, things like oh, recent ones, Bert Newton's. Those recent reissues Paul Hogan or something? Uh, or? Paul Hogan's coming in a Studio Nine release, but right, yeah, okay. um, and the best of Graham Kennedy. Graham Kennedy, that's so, yeah, the Basically, yeah. What about, did you do anything on Horse Camp or a Ponytail? Ah, <laughs> Horse Camp. <laughs> Horse Camp will go down as a very, uh, very favourite part of my. Is that the one with Dean Kane or Luke Perry? No, that's a Dean Kane one. That's yeah. the Dean Kane, yeah. yeah. Dean Kane, serial for doing films with uh, dogs, like the dog that saved Easter, the yes. dog that saved Christmas, the dog that saved some fucking holiday. <laughs> yep. And uh, and horse movies now. Yes, that's right. Apparently, he's nabbed some sort of role in the uh, CW Supergirl. Theory. Right, okay, that's so cool. His, his star has risen. If only right, returning to like a DC universe. And he's in Vengeance, isn't he in Vengeance, the new Soska sisters film? Is he? Uh, Vendetta. Oh, yes. Vendetta. Sorry. Yes, oh, yes, actually. Right, with, uh, Big Show? Is that the wrestler? One of them. That know. would make sense. It would, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, yeah, so sorry, so I didn't mean mm-hmm. to interject. So you've done recently no. done work with Reanimator from yeah. Beyond, and you mentioned before when we weren't recording that you did The Last Impresario. Is that okay? Yeah, la- Last Impresario. Yeah, yeah, so sorry. that was. Um, Get it right, man? That was my first Umbrella gig, so that right. was uh, Gracie Otto's documentary yeah. on Michael White, who was the theatre and film producer responsible for giving us, well, let's see, um, Rocky, Horror, Rocky Horror Show is a big one. Um, he also got uh, what became mem- key members of both Monty Python and the Goodies, the Footlights, off um, Cambridge stages and into the West End. Uh, he did Monty Python and the Holy Grail, um, countless other things. He, he sort of introduced... London to Yoko Ono and her avant-garde work and he did productions like A Chorus Line and he of Calcutta something like 300 theatre productions wow. I think but he's one of those guys that no one really knows about outside of people in the industry and um, yeah, he was also a pretty notori- notorious sort of party guy, he would um, take a camera pretty much everywhere and one great part of the, uh, the film that Gracie managed to get was all these amazing Candid party shots of celebrities, guys like you know, Jack Nicholson, he's got some royals in there, uh, early um, Naomi Watts photos. Um, Christ, you, basically, yeah. if you think of anyone in the 60s yeah. through to the 80s um, in Hollywood or in sort of British stage screen and you know, the, the hoity polloi, they were at his do's. Have you seen this? 
Uh, yeah, no, I did. Yeah, yeah. I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. Saw it. It's on Home Ed now. Home yeah, it's, it came it's out, well worth it. Came it came out earlier this year or late last year. Late last year, I think, was yeah. December. Did it, um, did it end up picking up uh, one of the actor awards? Or was it nominated uh, for Best Docker? I think it got a nom, nom for Best Docker. Right. Um, yeah, don't think it got it. I can't remember who won. But, um, yeah, it's great. It's a really solid documentary. Um, she, you know, Gracie does a great job of, I think, sort of portraying Michael as, um, you know, a, a, in a fairly balanced way. Sure. Um, you know, these days he's, he sort of gets about on a couple of canes, but he's still like, she met him at Khan and he still goes out and parties still you know, fuck off the clock and then Maybe. shows up in the hotel room. There's a great sequence actually where she's talking to one of the staff um, at the hotel he always goes to mm-hmm. and basically talks about how he you know, disappears till two or three in the morning, comes back, gets up at 11 or whatever, and he's just basically this constant presence every year at Khan. Um, he seems like a fascinating mm. guy. So, yeah. Wow, very cool. Mm. Well, let's talk about like your work. How would you describe your work? What, what mm. People that, that haven't seen the Umbrella stuff that you've done, yep. how would you describe it to them? Well, I guess when we talk about the illustrative stuff, um, I uh, most of my key influences are guys like Geiger and Frazetta, um, and, you know, comic book, old school comic book horror guys like Bernie Larson and that. And Simon Bisley is another big, um, big influence of mine. Anyone who's seen sort of Judge Dredd, 2000 AD comics um, from you know around the sort of um, mid to late 90s would be familiar with his style. Very sort of like punk version of Frazetta very muscular kind of stuff. Mine's kind of sort of sits in a, a mix between that. Um, I think there's that kind of, I try to bring a, a sharp edge to what I'm doing, but I like to sort of noodle away and, and get details. It's a bit of a hard, I don't know, I can't, I can't think of, anyway, I can't sort of point at another artist and say my stuff's like that. Yeah, it's good. Um, That's because they do different. have a distinct look because you can look at From Beyond or Reanimator or even if you look at the, the zombie Two zombie titles, zombie, title, zombie Holocaust and Zombie Flesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They the release like, they have a very similar kind of color palette that you would. Yeah, have so I like I like to sort of play with a pretty rich and varied palette. You know, I used to used to dabble a lot more in a lot of black and then subtle colors, but um, you know, I guess the cinematic stuff I've tried to sort of really broaden the palette. Um, yeah, so like the design stuff. Yeah, if you've seen the Zombie Flesh Eaters or Zombie Holocaust covers, which are sort of collage yeah. work. Um, but yeah, again, trying and people to can find product. stuff online, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. My, I mean, if you go to a site, redbubble.com, and just punch my name in, yeah. you find me. I'm on Twitter, <laughs> Simon and Sherry you on Twitter, Facebook as well. Yeah, Maybe Facebook. Yeah. Um, God, yeah, you, you find me, you can Google me. Don't confuse me with the very muscular, <laughs> um, very <laughs> homoerotic images of a guy called Simon <laughs> Sherry Wood who was in one of the real worlds. And right. we, bat- we battle it out for top spot. Um, nice. Anyone who sees the footage will see I'm clearly not. <laughs> um, I could lie and say that was my younger years, but no. Um, but yeah, so yeah, you Google me, you'll, you'll find me. Um, or if you do Simon Sherry Artist, Simon <laughs> Sherry Artist, or something like that, you'll find it. Cool. Which, which we should mention, we are filming this particular segment of the podcast. So that um, we are. this artwork we're talking about, you'll be able to watch We'll yes, we'll add it in post, so you'll be yeah. able to see we'll that. We'll do nifty, filmy things with it. <laughs> and there'll be a link in the uh, in the little description. That Are you that good? Oh, I'm going to do it. You can add links. All the way. Right. Oh, at least it's bells and whistles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. All right, well, one question I had for you as an artist coming in. Um, I was talking to Jared about this earlier on. How does an artist balance the creative originality of their work with the whole marketing objective? Is there a fine line, or is it a? do you have to sacrifice some of your own ideas for the marketing perspective? Well, it's an interesting one. I was actually talking to um, a friend recently about this. Um, that for me, I try to keep audience in the forefront when I'm doing any commercial work. And I don't find that to be bad. To me, constraints tend to, you know, I'm trying to find the best way to put it here. Constraint can produce better work. Right, yeah. I think, and I think it's a common thing with filmmakers, you know, you see some guys that um, get given the world to play with mm. and no control and or no constraint, um, you know, no oversight or anything. And we end up with films that go on for 18 hours. Paul <laughs> Thomas Anderson. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking like Dan Harmon was talking about it with regard to his latest version of um, Series of Community on Yahoo. One thing he keeps bringing up in his podcast is about, you know, 
I don't have a villain to play against. I don't have somebody to you know rebel against. And yeah. he, his big anxiety seems to be that you know, and it's something I sort of feel like if I get to go completely amok, you're like, well, you don't have a voice of dissent there. Yeah. So yeah. I try to kind of put it in my mind where I'm doing commercial work. And do you have your own self-imposed restraints or is there voices above you saying, no, you can't do that because we've got to sell this in a different way? Or Well, you, you always have, you know, various departments, like the sales department will have their own opinions and, and um, you know, the higher-ups. Um, and then you've got people... Uh, with the retailers as well, it's always good to get input. Mm-hmm. Um, as Jarrett would know, we yeah. have <laughs> and stuff, which is fantastic yeah. because you know you guys are on the front line of the consumer base. Uh, but also, like particularly with horror stuff, I, I've been trying to sort of. Um, I mean, I've always been kind of keyed into the community, but I'm trying to be a bit more vocal in, and engaged. Like, with, it's a great Facebook group. Um, which is a horror um, Beauty, DVD Blu-ray, and Blu-ray so shout out to those guys um, yeah. they've been really great actually in their, you know, they've been great cheerleaders of the stuff I've done with the Stuart Gordon and stuff but also um, seeing their other discussions about things that they want to see and, and um, what works and what doesn't work for them is great because it gives you that early insight so I guess there's no strict voice yep. but I, I sort of try and keep my ear to the ground to see what, what people might want and then use that to help inform what I'm doing. Excellent. Because you're one of those um, artists that's bringing back a real retro old school sensibility. Oh, where, you know, poster art back in the 70s and 80s told the story. These days they just sell faces. Yeah, know? it's it's a pretty common... I mean, I guess part of that is probably budget. Like, you know, you don't, you don't see a lot of... I mean, there's been a resurgence but in the illustrative poster art, but from what I've seen, that's more collector market yeah, like absolutely. your Mondos and, yeah. um, you know, maybe niche independents that manage to get somebody to do uh, yeah. for them. Um, a lot of the time, I think that, you know, art departments don't get necessarily given the, the budgetary freedom or the time. Yeah. So, you know, not just money, but time mm-hmm. to produce something. And then I guess certain things are expected to sell you also get those generic posters where, you know, three or four films have the same image. Head, 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 mm, yeah. title. Exactly. Yeah. Exact same title. We, 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 um, used. We've got a blog article on our website about that where we put up all the... Remember um, when, like, Dark Knight came out and you had that lone hero? Same with the okay, second yeah. Star Trek film and yeah. with this big cityscape in mm-hmm. the ruins and that and kind of... sort of yeah, focus. That's right. Yeah, well, that's it. You get tropes all creepy. Yeah. And, I mean, look... And it becomes fashionable. Exactly, yeah. And I think if it works, if a film works, then the key art kind of gets married to it. So, you know, one film has a hit uh, and that key art is something that is everywhere and people recognise it. People want to leverage off that. Mm. So they go, well, that format works, so just do that. Um, You know, one of the things I guess I've been lucky with the stuff like, again, the the Stuart Gordon films and, and the older titles is that you get an opportunity sometimes to um, reinterpret yeah. something um, and because it's not out there in the cinemas you're kind of I guess protected a little bit yeah. mm-hmm. I guess too with, with Umbrella being almost exclusively genre yeah. orientated you have a bit more creative freedom in, <coughs> the, in the genre work whereas you know stuff like remember you me and Dupree and, and mm. Just Married those posters all look the same because mm. Put Ashton Kutcher's face on it. Whereas exactly. you're working with films that don't have star power. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, people who are familiar with um, cult film and, te- you know, and, and genre television will know a name like Jeffrey Jones because he's been, yeah. you know, he's played umpteen mm-hmm. different aliens and, excuse me, across all the the Star Trek TV shows since Next Gen and you know films like Reanimator. But like, how many other you know um, genre films are? Character actors like that tend to have weight, but yeah, and to the general public, no one's going to necessarily know who he is. Yeah, um, and I guess it's an interesting one with Reanimator and From Beyond. My my feeling when I did that was to try and avoid, to my mind, the trope that's current with the illustrative posters, which is kind of um, that Struzan collage. So it's kind of trying to bring back that. You know, key head, it's still headshots mm. and, and effects, and, and don't get me wrong, there's some magnificent stuff there. Yeah. 
um, I love it. But when I look at, say, a film like From Beyond, and there were several versions out there, I was mm. lucky too that some people on that Facebook group had <laughs> every fucking version of yeah. that film, so you get to see a photo of them all. Um, one thing that's pretty obvious is that you start to see the same things. Yeah. The same, you know, it's executed differently, executed well, but it is that same look. And I wanted to give us something that gave us a bit of export potential. Yeah, you know, people overseas mm. haven't seen it. But also, I wanted to play around with an aspect which, to me, um, is the key thing with those films, like particularly from Beyond, is that grotesque, um, you know, flesh and melting, body horror, body horror yeah. that, that erupts from this unknowable place that they've managed to tap into. Um, so, I wanted to do something kind of harking to my mind. I can't remember the artist's name. It's killing me. He did like the covers for um, Brian Lumley's Necroscope series. Yeah, actually, um, yeah. So that was kind of my inspiration there. That and so there's of, also like a little hint of Clive Barker's artwork in it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, that kind of monstrous sort of um, uh, yeah grotesque creature, um, as opposed to trying to give you that person's face. Yep. Um, and then with Reanimator, the though that said, the likeness was quite good. With, oh, um, for that. With, yeah, with absolutely from beyond. Because if you look at the UK one, the second site release, or even the Screen Factory release. Second site completely missed it. Uh, it didn't remotely look at all mm. like Jeffrey Grimes. Like, well, well, if you're getting that from a couple of eyes, I mean, exploding yeah. fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. especially because yeah, I can tell you that that took a lot of uh, because likenesses. I'll be honest as well. Yeah, it's not something that I tend to focus on. Yeah. Um, so I was playing more for my strengths there, yeah. which are yeah, very textural as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was a yeah. It's, it's good that it's it's recognisable. Yeah, he's got very distinct, a very distinct look. Um, and yeah, with Reanimator, I guess it's the same thing. There's so many versions out there, um, and I wanted to try and do something that people would look and get as Reanimator, um, but wouldn't necessarily be seeing faces. Yeah. Um, so the idea of the skull and crossbones with the syringes was sort of uh, this is describing to people who might not have seen it is basically like um, Herbert West's skull zombie version of so he's got the the horn rimmed glasses that yeah. Coombs wears and the uh, skull and crossbones because I like that kind of under you know, they're, they're, they're engaging in underground medicine yeah and yeah. you know doing things that um, you know, no self-respecting university or hospital would do so um, rather than bones I used the green syringes because yeah. you know, like, for anyone who hasn't hasn't seen the film that you know one of the key things is that the the formulation that West creates is this glowing green almost radioactive slurry. almost like a rave yeah. stick <laughs> exactly yes <yeah. laughs> rave stick with a needle and um i wanted to sort of create so, and, you know like if you had unlimited budgets the type of thing that i would love to put you know some glow in the dark in there so oh, yeah. you had it on your shelf and it would light up or um you know give it more of a symbolic yeah. tone and that yeah so i guess the thing i'm trying to do with the horror stuff that i've been getting is to find ways around what's already been done before yeah. and yeah you know, i'm not going to call it groundbreaking because it isn't but just trying to give people a different yeah a point of take. difference that yeah, stands exactly. out. Yeah, yeah absolutely and i think i think it's worked you know, oh definitely know, yeah reanimator that was released was a jab exclusive it's limited to a thousand units and people are searching through stores to find a copy because it's sold in record time like it is the 26th. It was released April 1st. Yep. And it's almost completely wow. sold out. Everyone on the forums is showing the numbers. Well, with them, um, which, which is... No one's got 666 yet. No. Or number one. No. Well, number with, um, one with permission pending, yeah. hopefully we can incorporate that skull and, and syringes into our little podcast episode logo. Just I don't think anyone will notice. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, sure. Smoke it past them. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it should be fine. Tell you what, though, something I should have probably led in with is yeah. I want to... Were you a scribbler at school? Where did, where did it all begin? Like, it began probably with me defacing my parents' walls with crayons when I was <laughs> barely uh, able to do more than walk. Um, but yeah, yeah, all through primary school, like me and my mates, we were in a very small school. We had a drawing club and like my big thing was Godzilla. I, I watched the Godzilla cartoon um, relentlessly and Godzilla 1985 was like, oh, the second Raymond <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, 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 that's the original. No, 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 he's shows back. In, yeah. In a, yeah, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like the second the Perry Mason. Perry Mason yeah. used to yeah, play. Yeah. It was around that era he was still doing Perry Mason. Because yeah. he was in the original Godzilla, the American yeah. cut. Yeah. American yeah. Cut. Yeah. Cool. Um, and that, yeah, Godzilla was like my idol, basically. 
um, and do you, remember, do you remember when that came out in video stores? Uh, I don't had the big inflatable. Yes, yes. I always I, wanted that fucking thing. I, I, <laughs> I think I literally lost my shit um, when I saw that because so I would have been good. ten. Yeah, and walking into our local um, video store out in the hills. Yep. And seeing this eight foot tall inflatable so Godzilla, good. and I felt like I just met Jesus. <laughs> and yeah, and it was, you know, because I think my earliest monster movie recollection was seeing which one was it? It's the one that's got um, Godzilla, Rodan, and Mothra throw down with um, Ghidorah for the first time. I can't remember oh. the name of it. It would have been in the first series, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm um, dying to show my kids. I bought like the first two Mad Men boxes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so they're essential. I've just gone through them with my son. Oh, it's a, Did you go through them all? Well, except that the Millennium stuff, the newer. That's the newer. Yeah, yeah, yeah but we did all the original. Well, we, we did Final Wars um, about a year ago. Yeah. And they loved it. They thought it was insane. And my daughter loves Mothra things. Yeah. yeah. She's the best thing ever. Awesome. Um, Very cool. And so, yeah, we're going to have to see that. Destroy All Monsters is one that I'm really forward to when they get down Monster Island and it's Barragut yeah. and um, you know, Gatsuki shows up I think for the first time and it's goofy as hell but it's so much oh, fun oh they are amazing even like right up until the, the millennium ones they still used all the models and the miniatures and yeah, the, well, the man in a rubber suit so. and then to hear that Toho's going to be doing a new Godzilla film like I, I'm I'm bloody excited because I enjoy the the Gareth Ed Woods? Yeah, yeah, Gareth Evans, Gareth Evans, Gareth Evans, Gareth yeah, Woods. Yeah. 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 I enjoy because he's the guy who made Monsters, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I love Monsters and I enjoyed this, but it, yeah, it, and I saw what he was doing, but I think I'm not alone if you know, I wanted to see more of the yeah. big guy. Oh, yeah. For sure. You know, and they, they also changed his origin from you know, um, atomic warfare to, to like subterranean nuclear energy within the yeah, core of the Earth. Uh, like it, the, the backstory could have still played well with the atomic gap. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't sure. Because they kept it kind of, they seemed to keep it intentionally vague to me. Like I thought it was. It was but wasn't he like resting in the core of the Earth or toward? Yeah, yeah because of the radiation. In yeah, there, it's a bit hard to tell because they find that yeah. gigantic. What I'm presuming is another one of his species, the, yep. the massive skeleton, and the pods yep. that they end up taking um, that turn into the other two kaiju. But um, yeah, I wasn't too sure. Like, yeah, were they just saying he got? Yeah, he wasn't. He, obviously, he existed in the form he was at some yeah. point in prehistory. Which, but mind you, in the Toho stuff, memory serves that there's one version. It might be around the Millennium series or the one that bridges the pre-Millennium, where there was a version where there was like a Godzilla Saurus in one of them. Or I remember reading mm. about it, and that Godzilla is in a radiated giant version of that. So I know, suppose yeah, maybe freedom to move out of. I mean, as long as we've got, yeah, as long as we've got a giant Godzilla stomping yeah. the shit out of everything That's and beating up a monster, it's all good to me. Very good. <laughs> Are you thinking what I'm thinking about? Uh, what, what, what's this guy's thoughts on Roland Emmerich's 1999 opus? His <laughs> Godzilla? Which was basically a, an advertisement for a soundtrack. Look, oh, Jared and I are on the record, we do enjoy this film. I enjoy it. More it than is, we yeah. should. Yeah. It, it's... It's not, to my mind, it's, it's a monster film. It's not really Godzilla, but yeah. it's fun. Yeah. Um, but I sure as hell cheered along with everybody else at the myth screening of Final Wars when <laughs> the original G smashed the um, Emmerich version into the Sydney Opera House, <laughs> then nuked it with its atomic <laughs> breath. Seeing that with a whole bunch of Melbourne-based Godzilla fans yep. in a big in I would love to have been there. Oh, it was, it was, <laughs> it was magnificent. Um, but yeah, so I guess, you know, Monsters in one form or another really informed me from a very young age and yeah drawing monsters drawing dinosaurs I was a massive dinosaur fan um you know uh, also stuff like the fighting fantasy game books mm -hmm. uh, that artwork in those um and like yeah because i mean my mum read the hobbit to me when i was five like so many other people and i think fantasy's always been mm -hmm. a big thing for me I, I was a role play you know, typical fat nerd um, <laughs> growing up and yeah it just kind of you know, that sort of all cooked in. Yeah. My love of comics, metal music, and yeah, well, from, up with what For I me, think. my whole upbringing, movie education during my upbringing was just movie posters, and, mm. and my life was lived through some really cool stuff, like obviously The Goonies and Back to the Future. What's some artwork going right back that really influenced you, or oh, wow. resonates okay. now, if you, if you were to yeah, think Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I mean, the theatrical stuff for a lot of the classic horror films, I mean, actually, look, is that Sword and the Sorcery? Yes, yeah. it is. Bang. That's one there. Yep. 
Um, you know, stuff like... Um, what about Beastmaster? <laughs> Beastmaster was the first thing I ever saw on home video. Oh, awesome. We the got old Roadshow VHS. Yeah, yes. we, got, we got a Betamax. It yeah. had, I think, the trailer for Cronenberg's Rabid, which oh, I've yes. to this day not been able to watch because that fucking gave me nightmares <laughs> for years. <laughs> I awesome. want to watch it, but yeah. that, 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 clip, that trailer was just yeah. terrified the fuck out of me. Um, yeah, Beastmaster, which um, was again very evocative of Frizzella. But not Beastmaster 2 with the traffic and shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, well, yeah, I mean, Struzan stuff like the Goonies posters, the Star mm. Wars posters. Um, I guess Fire and Ice, um, yeah. which I think had Frazetta artwork on it. Um, so anyone who doesn't know, that's the Bash- Ralph Bashke yep. animated rotoscope film, which was based around Frank Frazetta's artwork. Um, God, what else? I remember the poster for, was it Future Kill? Oh, which Future was like Kill. A God, it one. was a Geiger yeah. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, that stuck with me. A lot of, basically, a lot of stuff that had banned in Queensland. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. An yeah. ongoing um, motive on our podcast oh, because Gary's from Queensland. 16 years in Queensland. Oh, yeah. spent from cool. age 6 through to uh, 22. Oh, yeah. Man. Poor bastard. Yeah, it was <laughs> yeah. a hard, it was it was a hard years. You didn't want to be there, man. No, no man. That was yeah, because there's so many things. I remember Last Temptation of Christ mm. was a big one. <laughs> that was banned in Queensland. Yeah, that was. That's available Queensland. on DVD, um, Blu-ray, and DVD in Australia under an M classification. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, yeah, Demon Society. What were the other ones that had great posters? Like I remember that. That's. Oh, so that great because the VHS yeah. had the flips. Is that when she's taking the mask off? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. the other one was the the Billy Wallach face. in the face, and the two yeah. Yeah. in their face. Yeah. What about um, remember popcorn? That was a good. Oh, popcorn. Popcorn's great. Yeah. Hanging for the Blu-ray. Synapse yeah. are doing it. I'm trying to think of it. popcorn was a, a similar kind of thing. Oh, removing okay. a face and a skeleton is underneath. There a lot of green news in the fifties. That's getting a Blu-ray release. Yeah, through Synapse. Yeah, I think it's due hopefully by the end of the year, if not early next year. Yeah, it's a bit of obscurity, that one. That came out through a, a pretty, you know, yeah, low kind of... Well, label, that was all like thanks really. to Christy Jett, the, the chick that was behind yeah, the, yeah. the Fright Rags. Um, oh, she got the movie going on that film, one. Yeah. yeah, big time, really. It's great, yeah. I remember it's good, seeing it's that. It's good when you get these people that are right behind a particular and thing. Yeah, to get yeah. it across the line. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh, I was going to say the reanimator poster, that original oh, yeah. one. With the desk. Where he's at the desk and he's got... Oh, dish there's a, yeah, there's a head. Yeah. He's got a good head on his shoulders oh, and a head on the dish. dish in front of yeah, him. Yeah, that's good. Um, and then, you know, the body leaving behind. I remember yeah. that. Fantastic. So great art. Dickie in, um, and that also had the Band of Queensland sticker on it. Yes, <laughs> yes. That did. We had a we had an own cut in Queensland. But you know what, dude? He's right. <laughs> when you go into a video shop back then... That was what you oh, said. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. And then, and then but you'd look out for those stickers. They were like, yeah, they'd yeah. influence you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember Hellraiser and Hellraiser... T- oh, Hellbound, the double VHS. With one tape in it. Oh. What's that? The double yeah, one tape. tape. No, it had two. Right? Yeah, it had yeah, yeah. Hellraiser and Hellraiser two. I think That's some right. video stores might have split it across. No, but they they had a fat cover, like a one of those yeah. with one tape sideways in it. Do you remember that? No. Yeah. Why is that a double tape? Well, I mean, it was still banned in Queensland. Yeah. One video store, yeah. Plains Video, had yeah. had, it. <laughs> had both films in there because um, the first one was. And it had so, the image of them. I mean, the first one was that bad. It should have been yeah, banned. I was going to say. The second, so the second, one, second one was banned. Oh, wow. And the second one had the, the image of them in surgical gear, which yeah. was never yes, in the film. Yes, yes, yes yeah, on the back right. of the yeah. slick, wasn't yeah. it? Because yeah. the yeah. front was all of them standing with the lightning behind them and that. Yeah. But you know what? We probably shouldn't go on about Hellraiser for too long because you know what those fans are like when you get stuck into Hellraiser. Yeah. They're oh, the worst yeah. fans of them all. Oh, wow. They okay. really have a go at you. I learned that lesson. Please, we have Hellraiser 1 and 2 and maybe a couple of the other. you got Three and four, yeah, and well. I, I'm working to try and get something happening with them. So mm. please don't eviscerate me. <laughs> 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 so bloodlines as well. Bloodlines on Blu-ray. Like, any, yeah. they'd like, they'd like, have, they, have you unearthed the lost cut, the producer's cut? No, this is I think the only high death that exists. Yeah, so. okay. Because yeah. yeah. there, because I think um, I can't remember his name. Kevin, someone, the director was fired from the film, okay. and it got released as an Alan Smithy release. So and there cutout. is a cut out there that is like a director's cut, and the fans know it. There's like probably on VHS somewhere. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's um okay, very sought after. Mm. Yeah. Well, but it's, I like Bloodlines on its own. I think that's cool. I haven't, seen, haven't seen. I haven't seen it in many years. Oh, no, he's in space. Oh yes, and there's the ship like the lament configuration. Yeah, yeah. but it also yeah. goes back hundreds of years to the yeah. original. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a, mm-hmm. yeah. You've got to love the bar. It's funny, like the first two, you know, sort of present. Day, and then we get to the third one. You get the backstory for Pinhead, yep. and then the next one's space. But then also these, you know, the the, the 
inception, the Philly, Genesis story. Philly English, you know. And it's like, yeah, uh, where can we go? Oh, and then we get to five. Inferno, it's like, oh, well, fuck, we'll just go back to the, let's go to present day. Well, Inferno Great changed shape, the sub, it what? changed the, yeah, wasn't I, there some, I liked them a yeah. lot. Yeah. Wasn't there some sort of behind the scenes stuff behind those at, at that stage too? Like, wasn't there two, like two films kind of practically, was it Inferno and the other one that were being made almost at the oh, same time? Oh, like Hell something? World and Hell Seeker, I think were filmed at the same That's time. That's right, yeah, yeah, there was some, yeah. That was um, track with Hell Rose and this is yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. And now he's got a new, Parker's got a new book or story coming out, Sacrament of Blood or something? No, it's the um, Scarlet Gospel. That's the one. Yeah. It's out already, yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. dying to read it, the reviews are great. Right. Cool. Is, he, uh, is there any news about them resuscitating the Frank? Like, is he going to ever get a guarantee? Is he in Hellraiser? In well, Hellraiser? the Hellraiser Origins project has been trying to get off the ground, which is a whole new kind of Hellraiser. Okay. Um, explores the Mesa. That's where I got in trouble because I wrote a massive yeah. article on yeah. it. And with the assistance of the guy that's doing it, and I think we got within two days we got a thousand hits on it, like likes yeah. on wow. on Facebook, and, and it went off tap, and we got all kinds of abusive messages, and then in equal measure as you know, positive messages too. Oh, so, yeah. but um, yeah, no, Hellraiser Origins, because um, mm-hmm. they won't make another actual sequel after they did that last one, Revelations, Revelations. with a new. Oh, actor oh that's right. Yeah. It wasn't Doug Bradley, the, was it? The yeah. chubby pinhead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it doesn't seem quite. This- it's like one of the reasons I haven't bothered going to the remake of um, Nightmare, or you know, because if it's not England, yeah. I've, I'll <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. We don't have. We don't have to come. I was going to bring that up yeah. later. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you guys uh, duke that one out. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, to me, some of these actors, are, yeah, they are the, the iconic. Monster. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I'll, I'll dip the toe in the water at some stage and watch that one. Yeah, you've got to it eventually. Exactly. Though. Yeah. Give into it, I suppose. Yes. Oh, cool. <laughs> well, did you have anything else you would like to cover? Uh, yeah, well, I, I guess, you know, if, if you can mention some forthcoming projects you're yeah. sort of working on there at Umbrella, that'd, oh, be, definitely. that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, well, let's see. We've got um, Invaders from Mars, the Tobe Hooper version, is hitting uh, Blu ray in. God, July, July, I think. Yeah. So I've done a new cover for that. It's not illustrated, it's designed, um, but I think people are going to like it. I've so seen it. It's hark, awesome. Harking back to the sort of 50s nice. um, you know, sci-fi origins of it. Um, in terms of horror stuff, in August, hopefully you'll be seeing four different titles from me with artwork. Uh, a couple of Hammer classics. So we've got Scars of Dracula, which also Very has, cool. um, along with Christopher Lee, you've got the old Dennis Waterman and uh, Doctor Number Two, Patrick Troughton, nice. appears as a, I think, a Renfield type character. Uh, and the uh, to what was it the Dennis Wheatley um, to a Devil a Daughter. First book I ever read. I wrote. First book I ever read. Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm working on some original art for that. Uh, then I guess the big one for August is um, John Carpenter's Assault on Precinct 13, which we're doing DVD cool. and Blu-ray. Um, so we're, we're trying to work on that one, see what we can sort of uh, give fans of the film and fans of Carpenter. that They might not get on another release, so I'm going to be trying to do some uh, nice artwork for that one. Excellent. Looking forward to Brilliant. working on that. Uh, some stuff coming up, um, horror-wise, later in the year. Uh, we're hoping to do a 30th anniversary of Demons. Fantastic. Or awesome. for Blue. So that that's um, one of the things that uh, I'm really keen to get stuck into. Do you remember how shitty the, the VHS art in Australia was for that? It was uh, a green hairy demon on the no, front? No, no, no. There was, no, no, there was, no, there was two. There was, there was two. two covers. One of them was fucking brilliant. Yeah. I've never seen that art on any other yeah, release. Yeah, it was a one. With the, the blue one. colour and the, yeah, the mask yeah, and then yeah, all yeah, the different... Yeah. Oh, you've oh, seen that one. Yeah, Isn't a European release like that? No, the Arrow's got our Palace Home video. Oh, okay. It's one of the jackets you can yeah, choose, yeah. which I'm sure they didn't license. Yeah. I don't know how you would find out who the artist <laughs> was and go to the effort of licensing. Right. Yeah. That was one. And then on the other side was was the Demon, was just the standard normal Demon yeah. artwork. Same like Demons 2, similar, just like a, I think like yeah. almost like a screenshot. Yeah. yeah, so I'm hoping I can do something there that'll be, you know, people will dig it. Um, it suits your sensibility. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think I can definitely bring So many things it. you could... There's so much, yeah, yeah it's to pretty, work with. Really, pretty bug fuck crazy film. <laughs> so, <laughs> so good. Um, and then we've got uh, we're looking at doing society at some stage. Oh, excellent. Um, yep, and the other one that I'm pretty excited about because it's harking back to the old Stuart Gordon is Dolls. Oh so, yeah, brilliant. Um, we're looking to do that on blue. 
and uh, oh Christ, there's another one that people might like, a certain film called Vampires Lesbos, which we'll oh, be doing wow. blue and deep, uh, blue um, <laughs> for that later in the year. Um, outside of the horror stuff, we've got Jen is obviously a big oh, one, the Chevelle classic, which I've seen um, the some footage from it, and it looks pretty damn beautiful. Fantastic. Um, I think it's going to be a great release. That's it's such out. a cinematic film. It's yeah, just... it's stunning. Yeah. Like, um, and the colour has really come out beautiful. And I love I love really good use of soundstage, and a lot of the cave scenes and that are all done on a soundstage. And it's yeah, it's so amazing. Really, it just jumps off the screen. I haven't even seen like what your clean yeah, footage looks like. It's, it's looking pretty. I've seen some of the um, the transfer just the other day, and oh, mate, it, it looks wait. pretty good. Um, that's coming out on DVD and Blue uh, in July, I think. So, yeah. Well, everyone should see it. It's an important yeah, film. It's, it's, it's a yeah, fantastic yeah. film. And like we were talking about before the podcast, we've also got um, Tata Wally, which is the uh, doc, uh, the um, docudrama. Directed by Steve Jodrell, who did Shame. You know, with uh, oh, Beverly Furnace. Yes. The one where mm-hmm. she's raped and then gets revenge on them. She rides the bike with a bike helmet. Is it that one? Furness is a lawyer, isn't she? She comes in. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she, yeah. she gets raped though. Yeah. No, no, isn't it that she's. No, there's, 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 there's. Does she, she get raped right? or yeah, does she defend Because it came out around the, about yeah. maybe a year, two years after Extremities, and it was like this, like a serious approach, not like a early 80s, yeah. Miss 45 slash lipstick yeah. kind of, you know, rape revenge type of scenario. It was like a genuine, like, this is, you know. It's not quite that heavy though. No, no yeah. probably. But yeah, you know, Tata to Yeah, so Tata Wally, which yeah, yeah, stars Ernie <laughs> Dingo and it tells the story of, um, I'm trying to remember his first name, Robert. Robert Tata Wally. Robert Tata Wally. Yeah, yeah. Who started one of the stars of Jeddah. And um, yeah, it just it, it's one that I, I've got vague memories of. Australia's first kid. indigenous you know, yeah. movie yeah. star and, and exactly. moved to the city and became, you know, this. Like, he had a really tragic life though, you yeah, know, yeah, because yeah. he got sort of you know, rejected by his own people before becoming you know, essentially a white fella. Yeah, yeah. Much, so yeah. that that's cool. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see um, that one out there, and I think people are going to really enjoy that. Um, what else have we got? We're, we're actually looking to do um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, films. Yes. Very um, cool. So it's we'll very be doing cool. those on yeah. blue, and that's another one that, as an old school Turtles fan, I'm kind of uh, a bit excited about trying to do something special. That would be killer. Imagine so, doing official artwork. Or the turtles. Oh, that's pretty yeah. good. So, you know, this is obviously that stuff's coming. So, yeah. whether or not, you know, everything will happen exactly as I hope, but I'll tell you what, I've, I'm trying to make some things happen on that one. So, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, yeah, I think that's that's sort of like gone to memory the things I can think of. But we've got heaps of other stuff. There's a lot of good stuff. Yeah, yeah wow, very prolific. Yeah. I mean, people yeah. who like the miniseries, you know, classic Australian miniseries, we've got The Great Air Race, mm-hmm. um, which is pretty interesting. It's about the 1934 London, no, Melbourne, London to Melbourne, or Melbourne to London. I feel like <coughs> an idiot because I can't remember which one. <laughs> But very famous yep. um, air race, you know, back in a period where, you know, you had a lot of the daredevil pilots that were flying from one part of the world to the other, breaking records left, right and centre. Um, it's got a pretty amazing cast for the time. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think cool. that'll be a good one. So. And Black Beauty is about to hit in May. Oh, no <laughs> man, is it? Yes, yep. Black Beauty. Another that, horse film. That, that's, <laughs> a, that's a Luke Perry It's a one. good market. That's the Luke Perry Luke Perry right. and Bruce yep. Davison, the jellyfish man right. from uh, X-Men, among other things. Right, there you go. Um, There's a market. The drunk from Sharknado. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's doing all right for himself then, isn't I he? I prefer to think of him as the dad from Harry and the Hendersons, a TV series. <laughs> I never saw the TV. I don't even know. I knew there was oh a TV Oh my God, yeah, you didn't? Yeah, oh, no, there was a... Far out, man. Wow, I'm not sure that I ever knew that. Same creature design. Like, it looked just yeah, like the movie. Sam Winston yeah. who did that. Yeah. 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 Uh, Rick oh, Baker. Oh, Rick Baker, of oh, there course. You go. Yeah, Rick yeah. Baker. And it had, yeah. um, inside it was the guy who played the Predator. What's his name? Kevin Peter Michael Halls. Halls. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There you go. Anyway. Rest in peace. Yeah, yeah. Chuckled off a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. You did. Um, yeah, it's a TV show. Yeah. No, I mean, we've, you know, <laughs> I'm not sure I knew about that. <laughs> I'm very excited. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> maybe seeing what will probably be like well, a YouTube boot. That and Al yeah. were my. No, that was the be yeah. all and end all for me. <laughs> I'd love to see dinosaurs. That's one I'd love oh, to see. That? Yeah, that yeah. was yeah. fantastic. Um, <laughs> I'm surprised. Yeah, that, that has not had a physical release here, but maybe in the US? Yeah, it has in yeah, the US. Yeah. 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 There's yeah, a box set. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, it's, uh, that pretty much brings us to the end of this particular segment. So, yeah. definitely have to thank you for joining us on this. Not a problem. It's been a pleasure having you. I love Likewise. talking about this retro kind of 
style of artwork, but do you want to hang around and talk about our focus film? Sounds fine by me. Brilliant. Needy and Jennifer were best friends. They were totally lesbian. <laughs> until Needy caught Jennifer eating her boyfriend's face. Needy. <gasps> Jennifer's actually evil, not high school evil. <laughs> no way. Extra salty. <laughs> Jennifer's body. Got you, butch. And of course, our focus film this week was Jennifer's body, which, Jarrett, you brought this one to the table, so why I don't did. you tell us all about it? Okay, well, you really put me on the spot there. So Jennifer's body is basically the tale of a girl that is... Oh, now, this is sort of hard because oh, that, that reveals the ending. Basically, a girl that appears to be possessed by some demonic force that uh, a band, that a touring band that comes to town, may have had some sort of influence or hand in. And uh, she has. I, I'm terrible at synopsis. It's like you're reading off yeah. the cover, man. It's I don't know. Great. I actually should have. Why don't I just read the synopsis? <laughs> I got the DVD here. It says Sexy, temptress Megan Fox is hotter than Hell as Jennifer, a gorgeous, seductive cheerleader who takes evil to a whole new level after she's possessed by a sinister demon. Oh, there you go. That's pretty much what he said. Steamy action and gore galore ensue as the male student body succumbs to Jennifer's insatiable appetite for human flesh. Now it's up to her best friend to stop Jeffrey's reign of terror before it's too late. Now it's hard for me to do because I've clearly got cold. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's the synopsis, Glenn. Excellent. Uh, and the well reason done. I chose it was because I'd never seen what we watched tonight, which is the extended cut mm -hmm. of the film. I hadn't seen this version. I saw What's it the difference like, between the extended cut and director's cut? Obviously, director had a long time. no fucking, no fucking participation. I, I the film was pretty much taken out of the yeah. hand to the director. Um, because, Which the director was Karen Kasuma, who did Aeon Flux and Girl Fight. And Girl Fight, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And she's done, I think she did like an episode or two of like The L World. She seems to yeah. do a very uh, female empowerment type. Mm -hmm. Her pieces. next one's called The Invitation, but I, don't, I know nothing okay. about it. So. Yeah, it sounds like I think that's a genre one. I don't know. Anyway, it seems strange. So it stars Megan Fox and Does. Amanda Seafry. Is that how you say her Seafry. And, and Roy. Roy. <laughs> <laughs> and Adam Brody, Seth Cohen. J.K. Simmons and uh, Simmons. Chris Pratt has a small role yes, in it. I, a very I, funny yeah. one, too. I was going to say, he was the um, police cadet. Yeah. The, yes. jo the jock yeah. in the bar, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great little... That was when he was fit, before he did Parks and Recreation, before he got fit again. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, yeah. And now he's dominating Hollywood. He is, yeah. and I'm very happy about it. I Same. discussed it before. How fucking amazing did he look in the knock-up of Indiana Jones? Absolutely. Did you see that? No. He's rumoured to be taken over. I did over, hear that he was... But yeah. they did a, a knock-up mm. image of him in the in the clothes, and he looked the part. Absolutely. Like, that's the second you go, okay, Harrison, step aside. You know, yeah. this will be cool. This is true. I'm glad you chose the film, though, because yeah. I haven't seen it for a long time. It actually is a lot cornier than I remember it. Definitely corny, mm. but I like the fact that it is, essentially, it was aimed at a predominant teen audience whilst paying homage to you know, classic yeah. horror films. Mm. We grew up on but obviously it didn't resonate with that audience when it was released theatrically. Yeah. And I think it's it's actually survived the test of time. Like, I think now it plays really, really well. And there was a bit of argument when it came out that the dialogue was a little bit too smartly written for teenagers to talk like a Dawson's Creek thing. I didn't think what so. Was I think that, that was good. No. Was I that, think it sounded perfect. Yeah. That Don't was, look crazy. Was that pre-Juno? Uh, no, this is the Straight first after. thing she did after Juno. So I was going to say that, yeah. yeah, it's interesting because... Yeah, dialogue-wise, she's definitely a stylist. I mean, like, you know, Kevin Smith, mm. that yeah. sort of thing. Like, say, United States of Tara. Yeah, like, yeah. She, yeah, she can, taps can... into generational things as well. Like, yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, yeah, there's, there's a very, um, yeah, stylized sort of beat to her dialogue. That, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not natural dialogue, mm. but it's still... It's got, like, a musical sharp. rhythm to it, yeah. yeah. And I was saying to you both before, it kind of feels like John Hughes meets Wes Craven. And yeah, yeah, kind yeah of definitely. Really Particularly, there's Craven. a lot of Nightmare on Elm Street in there, like, through her, sort of, um, Amanda Siegfried's, uh, you know, sort of, when she just know, hallucinates or goes into yeah. dream yeah. sequence, it almost feels like a heart's back to another. But even the yeah. neighbourhood scenes yeah. in the house, the, yeah, the, 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 the camera approaching the house. Well, like, the shot where one of the victims... Won't give away who as he's driving yeah. down the street, and you can see all the houses, and they look identical, and it's all mm. it's really dark, dimly lit. But yeah, it's very um, yeah, very uh, surreal in the way yeah. it's it's shot. Yeah, it seemed like something straight out of the yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street. Definitely, dream and, and all high school stuff is straight out of an eighties, you know, teen yeah. comedy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it does have that really sort of strange 
you know, whilst it's set in present day, it does have those moments of 80s sort of throwbacks, like with her getting dressed for prom, and she's got like a real 80s prom yeah. outfit, and yes. then, like, this crazy kind of permy sort of big fucking hair. And there's moments where it does kind of have these kind of flashes of the 80s. Which Plus the, the segregation of dynamics in the school, you know, the goth and... Mm. The I was going to say too, like the costumes in terms of like the goth mm. seem more of a throwback to, as opposed to the sort of more contemporary yep. goth that you have mm. period when the film was actually made. Um, yeah, it was very, yeah, very John Hughes in the way it was yeah. set up. And we, we, we can't, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about J.K. Simmons in this oh, film yeah. with his Willy Wonka the... style haircut and a hook for a oh, hand man. which there is no explanation no. for at all it's just one of those some things. sort of weird skin t- condition thing going on oh. neck, I think I noticed as well. and, and then voice. he picks up a lift towards the end of it yeah, yeah. yeah. Was we that... mentioned he kind of looked like Dave Letterman at a point he's <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. he has like almost a Dave Letterman accent and this yeah odd kind of Dave Letterman look yeah, it's like he was able to steal pretty much any scene he was in without chewing scenery yeah, yeah. Was yeah, absolutely. And um, I was reading somewhere, Jason Reitman produced this one, and he said that he wanted to make a film that gave teenage audiences now the same rush that he felt watching horror films in the 80s. So do you reckon he would have done that? Do you reckon he succeeded? I, I found it pretty tamer than I thought it would be yeah. in terms of like the kills and the gore. Um, like the gore was there when it was on display, but it was all aftermath. Uh, and a lot, but there was, yeah, uh, that's right, off camera. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, okay. you know, yeah. talking about Nightmare on Elm Street, when someone got put <coughs> through the blender, they got put through the that's blender right, right yeah. in front of your eyes. Um, so, I don't know. There's a fantastic quiet. kill scene. We're not giving anything away, but no. there's a fantastic kill scene where. We are like, giving something away. We're giving away a copy of this DVD, mind you. Bam, nicely well, done. Okay. But the, the scene where the band is singing and then they kill the character, Megan Fox's character. Yes. That kill is off camera. That's right. That giveaway. Yeah. Oh. Spoiler man. That's three quarters of the way. Well, no, it's, it's not a spoiler. That's another one. You know what right. happened. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we can just put a disclaimer yeah. at the start of this thing. But um, that kill is the best kill in the film. We don't see it. No, well, yeah, it's you know. it's very shaky shots of yeah. things. Yeah. Which is, I guess, it's a contemporary aesthetic. Though I mean, you look at it, it's the same thing with action films. Yeah, where it's starting that's being broken down a bit but you know shaky cam and quick cuts mm-hmm. like, yeah, I guess exactly. too you're going for a teen audience you can't push it too far well that's it but, and then we did watch the um, unrated yeah, slash uncut yeah. version so you kind of feel like if they were going to release that version for home end they should have probably shot some stuff yeah. so they know that they can still market to the older audience that you know but, they but maybe they didn't know that they, yeah. well you know they might have shot the film with a teenage audience in mind and well, therefore yeah, definitely, they don't yeah. feel like they should be too gratuitous no. but Still a pretty ugly film in many ways. Oh, like, no, it's violent in its nature. Yeah, yeah definitely. I was, was going to mention too, I think in terms of that going for a similar sort of aesthetic to a film that came out during Jason Reitman's youth. And yeah. I think it's far too tongue-in-cheek, even yeah. if it's not out laugh at loud funny. It is at times. It is definitely laugh at loud funny. Um, and uh, in addition to that, there's a real lack of suspense. I don't think oh, there's definitely. any point in the movie where you're like no. literally... There's a few Clean jump scares, but don't they, they just get me? Yeah, they they yeah. weren't really effective. They don't work, and they're obvious. Yeah. You know, oh, okay. So there's nothing to the left of her when she closes the, you know, the, the yeah. door to the cellar. Oh, but then she's in the kitchen and she turns around. And you're like, well, it's gonna, yeah. okay. Like well, she's looking in this yeah. direction now. She looks yeah. in that direction when she Absolutely. looks back. Bam. Yeah. 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 Very, yeah. very telegraphed. Yeah. 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 Who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe that was an intentional throwback as well because it was a classic. You know, could it even be that maybe? You know, these sort of things with the director that doesn't have that sort of background at all had done like Aeon Flux, which was essentially a very effects driven mm, film absolutely. based on a animated MTV yeah. animated series. And then prior to that had done uh, Girl Fight. It's sort of like, I don't know if there was, I don't know, maybe this wasn't the right director for the job. I think yeah. they definitely delivered it. They're both very choreographed films, film, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's an interesting one. I think, um, I kind of wonder if it's maybe just that sort of leading mainstream cinema to play it safer yeah you know like if this was like a full on indie horror film mm. you know I think that they're they're less kind of at the mercy of um, not audience consideration but like marketing consideration yeah true um, and it would be pitched more at a horror horror audience like you yeah. guys have said this is kind of pitched more at a teen audience yes yeah. um, so I guess for that reason you know you killed the happening more off screen yeah. the aftermath which is a bit more palatable I guess mm-hmm. well I do like that there's a lot of practical stuff done yep. yeah. in the aftermath of mm. seeing the bodies mm. and that and 
And there is there is one kill that you don't directly see, but you see enough of, which I think. Is this the silhouette scene? Yeah, 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 which I thought was quite you know effective for what it was. So yeah, yeah I think I um, yeah, it it was at times a little clunky, but you could tell that their heart was in the right place mm. with what they were trying to do, and it's, it was entertaining. Something like, something yeah. interesting I thought was well we talked before about it being kind of similar to All Cheerleaders Must Die. Mm. The oh, Lucky Machine film. film. Yeah. But I'm thinking this film obviously came first, but yes. the original All Cheerleaders Must Die came before Jennifer's Body. Was there an original book? Yeah, Lucky McKee started with like a, it's just a Super 8 video. It's a, it's a 90 minute oh, film okay. um, right, that, right. that he remade. Yeah. But that film went big guns and, and it put him on the map. And I'm wondering if this was influenced by that because there's a lot of similarities going on yeah. there. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't and know particularly in the in the the artwork, we we're talking about the similarities. Well, yeah, I was going to show this to Simon. Now, this is the original theatrical key art. We'll patch this in if this video ends up on YouTube. That's the original US theatrical key art. I remember seeing that. Just That's describe really it. Cool. Just describe it. Uh, it's literally uh, Megan Fox sitting on top of like an old school kind of uh, desk. You know, where you would open yeah. it up and hide books and that. And there's a hand coming out of there, so clearly someone's body's trapped in there. Blackboard behind her that says "Hell yes." Um, yeah, of course. There's people listening to the podcast that may never see this. Image. <laughs> I didn't think of that. Um, and it's 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 cool. Like you know, uh, as far as I can tell, looking at the image, it actually looks like it's drawn. Like you know, they've taken in a photo of her, but then they've, they've illustrated it. Um, and you know, even the title treatment's all done in like US kind of college letter font. Um, and it's cool. It tells you, as we discussed, this this tells you what the film's about. We and know it's story. in high school. Yep. Um, she's a pretty girl, sinister, you know, sinister. Um, and it's it's subtle. You know, the tagline "Hell Yes" is written on the blackboard. It's subtle enough, but it's great. In fact, yep. it kind of reminds me of student bodies artwork a little bit. Do you remember the student bodies artwork? No, the comedy <laughs> from the eighties. Anyway, it's very obscure. Um, that should be a focus film one day. Okay, so I've shown you that. Now, what I'm going to show you is the Australian DVD, which is the same as the Australian Blu-ray which has the, almost the same image of Megan Fox on it, although this looks more the photographic image that was used. Um, they've photoshopped uh, Amanda Siegfried, Siegfried and Lloyd, <laughs> Seyfried, I don't know, in the background. Uh, and then there's just a lot of blood, like there's blood dripping from her mouth, there's blood yeah, seen in the background. they're trying very hard to make it and very yet, obvious. And yet the only like, piece of actual gore is hidden by the bloody rain. Yeah, the hand, which yeah. I've never noticed, that is, that is there. And they've... They've upped the seat. And it looks yeah, like is that not the short. shortest seat you've ever yeah, seen? It's like a yeah. business chair. They've what just raised the hell? it. Yeah. So it's odd. But that, so that's the Australian art. And then we have what was the US DVD and Blu ray art. Oh, Something different again, which yeah. is probably the shittiest version of it yet. Yeah. Down to the title treatment. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. And look, if you. now they made her look like a cheerleader. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And if you're yeah. listening to this and, and you're not actually watching, go and yeah. Google these images because yeah. they're all up there. But yeah, yeah. there's a. The first one is obviously the most effective. It's got Amanda Seyfried's name on it, though. She doesn't appear on any of the other posts. Yeah. She's on this one, but she's not on the front <laughs> cover. Yeah. It's confusing. But um, there's, there's some unusual marketing, how they went about the film. Um, I want to mention, too, that I really dug the soundtrack. It was released by, I think it was by maybe Phil by Raymond in the States, who did like all the Fallout Boy, those kind of things, packages, you know, kind of stuff. But there's some great tracks on there, like Silver Sun Pickups. I mean, I don't know if that the track, the whole track was actually on the soundtrack or not. It was in the movie at the end, which yep. is Jennifer's Body, which mm-hmm. the title's taken from. So obviously I feel like Diablo Cody is probably a huge whole fan. Sure. Um, but yeah, like I like the soundtrack. I well, like what about the, the, the what about song. what about the lead song? Is that like an actual song written for the film or was that previously? Well that's yeah, I, I did look into that. How, how does it go? I'm still here breathing now. I'm still here breathing now. Something through the tree. No, you're off. You're off your game. Yeah, no, that was that was the main. Yeah, that was the other part. I know. Oh, I sung the intro bit. You know. Okay. <laughs> It'll come back to me. Maybe I'll do it again. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, you never know. I like that. I look yeah. forward to that. Um, but yeah, no, I don't mind the soundtrack. I mean, the track that track itself is very much like almost a, like a dashboard confession mm. track. You know, that when they had the full instrumentation, so it really matches that kind of emo. Not the not the screamo sort of micro. But it's also that emo the, the soundtrack is also like a timepiece as well because absolutely you know, yeah. Even now it's dated, you know. Absolutely, yeah. it's kind yeah. of like to that era of horror films as to what new metal was in the late nineties, early two thousands that all had that particular time. I was going to say with 
speaking of metal, one thing I yeah. find interesting was the blending of a bit of metal in some of the more threatening, um, um, they weren't really horrific moments, but the sort of lead up to particularly when she started, she's, Jennifer's had her transformation. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think there's a scene where she's approaching the, oh, the footballer. footballer. It dies today, the yeah. track wave dies there, middle pool band. Exactly. Just, just tracking in on him. Yeah. He's crying on a football yeah, exactly. field. <laughs> was, and that's like just a heavy metal call. It was, it was very surreal, but at the mm. same time, I thought it sort of worked beautifully. Um, you yeah, know, nice sort of use of the devil's music. Yeah. yeah. Um, and even the time. score, there was like some industrial kind of Nine Inch Nails moments where like mm. she's driving along the dark road. Yeah. You know, this real yeah. computerized kind of new metal yeah. sound. Yeah, yeah it's like they were sort of um, yeah trying to blend a few different um, eras into the sound. It kind of worked. Yeah. It worked for me. Yeah, I think I think it worked well. I think the film's a little bit too long. That's my only. Yeah, I don't know if that was. I look. I don't think that was just the case because we watched Young Raider. Because I think there's only probably less than ten minutes difference between the two films. Yeah. I think when I saw it theatrically in, in the US when we went to see the movies felt it too long. Yeah. It feels like there's a couple ending places where it, yeah, definitely, and it yeah, just definitely. continues on Lord of the Rings style. So, yeah. Okay, uh, there's a little bit up. There's a little bit up. There's a little bit more. I find the bookends really weird yeah. too, to be honest with you. Yeah. Which yeah. I don't want to give too much away, but it yeah. does open up yeah. with her in prison. Yeah. And I find yes. that stuff a bit weird. Yeah. 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 yeah it's, uh, I guess well, it's... like mental, mental, uh, yeah, like prison for yeah. mentally insane. I think yeah. it's Arkham Asylum or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, we've pretty much milked that one. What do you reckon? You got anything yeah, else to uh, add? Have I got anything else to add? Keep listening because we will give away a copy. We do, yeah. We've got the Australian DVD, which has the second best art after the theatre. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not, not that bad. Um, we may mention, too, on the Australian DVD, and I assume it's on the Blu-ray as well, it's actually got the theatrical and the uncut version, which they don't advertise on the slip. They just advertise uncut. So you'll be able to uh, tell Compare the difference both. between both. Yeah, I'm curious to watch the theatrical now. And, and whether see. that affects the, the soundtrack as well. There might be yeah, you know, yeah. some That's... chops and changes yeah. there. I was, I was just going to say that I'm, I was actually impressed with um, Megan Fox's acting. Yeah, well, we didn't even yeah. touch on that, of course. Yeah, Absolutely. which, which um, because, yeah, she does have a tendency, uh, I think it's more um, the fault of, uh, one Mr. Bay uh, <laughs> yeah. rendering yeah. most of his female leads yeah. as nothing more than airbrushed Barbie dolls yeah. um, that you know you kind of expect her to be rather bland well, but she's, she's, she's so funny some, and yeah she's yeah. got some pretty decent comic yeah. timing um, she goes at it with full like she yeah. she understands the horror very well absolutely yeah. Yeah. there's like scenes in there that would have been Potentially risky for a career coming off the back of doing, say, Transformers before. Was this at the time that she had the falling out with Transformers? So her career could have potentially well, no, taken a nose Because she was in Transformers 2. Yeah, yeah but then yeah, she but, returned for the third one. No, but there was a big falling out with Michael Bay because she called him a Nazi or something like that. Was that during the making of uh, 2? Whatever. Because I think it's yeah. might have fallen between 1 and 2. So I think yeah. she was just on the rise, but you know, she's on like the kitchen floor eating chicken off the floor. Yeah. Yeah. She's in a mix of Very aesthetic. compromising. She's in a yeah. very um, Vulnerable. steamy. Um, lesbian, you know, scene. lesbian scene that may be extended in the unrated version we're not sure but it did seem to go along and it caused a great deal of silence as we were <laughs> yeah, they great right. called us on it it's like is that is that we're like oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as she was wearing an evil dead t-shirt yeah. 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 yeah which we all kind of commented yeah. on we yeah. got weddies yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's possibly one of the most grotesque images of him. yeah <laughs> disturbing but uh, yeah no she's um, yeah she was very good at looking rather evil and demonic in some yep. very key scenes. And just even um, moments where she's not looking like she does on the cover. She's a bit... Uh, uh, haggard. haggard. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, it was interesting to sort of see... But even Amanda Seyfried says she looks ugly for, for her. her. Yes. You know? yeah. <laughs> they yeah. play up that Which the rest of us are thinking she's still pretty hot. Yeah. 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 If you like that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Alright, well, let's wrap that baby up. And let's thank our special guest, Simon. Thank you so much for thank coming you in so and much, talking sir. to us. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. We look forward to looking well, at definitely. all the stuff you got coming out. Oh, and we actually, Simon and Umbrella, were kind enough to bring some giveaways. Oh, we're good. What's that? For us. Uh, well, I'll let Simon tell us. Okay, well, we've got three copies of uh, the Umbrella Blue release of Fulci's Zombie Flesh Eaters. Fantastic. Um, very nice, colourful artwork, too. Yes, and very cool. I've also thrown in. A, uh, one of my t-shirt designs it's uh, one that I've done a while ago as a rip on uh, Humpty Dumpty uh, otherwise known as Dawn of the Dumpty um, <laughs> very, very cool. cool 
So, yeah. Uh, they're, they're Fantastic. Well, keep listening because there will be a chance to win those very, very shortly. But thank you so much, Simon, for coming thank in. You, it's sir. been an absolute pleasure. Likewise. Hopefully we can catch up again soon. Yeah, definitely. Cheers. Right, cheers. Over there, he get your hand off my penis! This is the bloke who got me on the penis, people. Alright, so I guess now we can move on to what perhaps my favourite part of the episode. Yeah, I love this part. Uh, our guilty pleasure. Guilty. And there is no such thing as a guilty pleasure, but we use the term anyway because Absolutely. in the eyes of a lot of other people, we'd be shamed. Yeah. Not like in some of these films. Fuck those jerks. Here's <laughs> yeah. One that's right. Um, do you want me to go first? Yeah, yeah. Let's wallow in your guilt. Mm, okay, 1997. I, I, I need a, I'll say the director's name. Okay. All right, and then I'll say the actor's name. I think by from the actors, you'll get it. Okay. All right, okay. so 1997, the director is Brian Robbins. Uh, no. Do you know Brian Robbins? No. Okay, he directed Varsity Blues. Oh, I don't know. Ready to Rumble. Oh. Perfect oh, Score. Man. What's his name in it? Um... Uh, okay. Yeah, David yeah, Arquette. Uh, yeah. We did The Perfect Score, which was a cool Oh, that's film. the one with Chris Evans? Where they yeah. cheat in... Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, yeah. yeah, And then he moved on to all those shitty... That's like Eddie. an MTV producer. Yeah, it was. And yeah. he moved on to all those shitty Eddie Murphy films like A Thousand Words and Norbert and things like that. Didn't mind. Oh, no, I never saw A Thousand Words. Well, anyway, he started off in 1997 with a film starring Cal Mitchell and Keenan Thompson. Oh, is this like Good Burger? It is Good Burger. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a friend that's a big um, Cal and... What's the other one? Keenan... Dean and yeah, 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 they had their own little sitcom yeah. after this. Yeah, well, anyway, Good Burger back in the day, I loved it, man. Yeah. I'm kind of a sucker for a good kids film, and it was based on a Nickelodeon sketch. Um, there was a TV show called All That, which right. was like a Nickelodeon version of Saturday Night Live. Okay. Right, and those two were in it, and, and Brian Robin directed that. Okay, cool. Um, anyway, it's a dumb movie. It's about two guys that work in a burger joint, and the story involves a big business franchise opening up across the road as they do in the movies yeah, yeah. Um, and look the other the, the other joint is called Mondo Burger and they come along with a bigger burger that's right. better uh, fortunately these two guys in their little uh, good burger joint have a special sauce recipe that cannot be beaten Mandos? that's like a man <laughs> juice sauce well no it's not, not Mandos, Mandos no right. But uh, naturally, Mondo Burger wants the recipe, and so oh, it's in so an all stop it, nothing. Nothing whatsoever, right. and it's a dumb movie, and it's really Who, who else is in this, apart from those two? Is there, like, some character actors or yeah, something? Yeah, I like really that? wish you, um... I wish you, I know, yeah. <laughs> because I, I thought you would, and I just forgot to jot them down. Right. Um, okay. There were, right. yeah, there's some big names. You, Google's good for that, you yeah, know? Yeah, absolutely. You can look it up. And I don't really have anything specific to say about it. We'll I mean, fix that in post. <laughs> it's a, yeah, just cut to me adding these names. Right, right now, there's a, there's a Good Burger fan out there with fists clenched and yelling fuck those jerks that's right you know nothing <laughs> that's right <laughs> actually you know there is a good burger chain in the US oh is there yeah I don't know I don't know if that was pre I imagine it's post film but I don't know if it's still around but there was one welcome on to good burger this is good burger can I take your <laughs> order <laughs> and it's probably the same two actors washed up working yeah, there now I reckon yeah. I reckon but um I don't have a lot to, to say about yeah, it good. it's just fun I mean yeah it came along at the same time as Meet the Deedles and oh, that. Meet the Deedles films awesome just, soundtrack. Oh, mate, those Angus films just really... That time too, just, I think. They resonated with me, man. Yeah, they really yeah, did. Yeah. Um, so, Good Burger, I don't even know. It hasn't got a local release. No. I don't no. know if it's um, even got a DVD release overseas. overseas. Yeah, I mean, right. I haven't seen it since VHS days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think Good Burger is my guilty pleasure. Guilty. What's yours? Uh, mine's from 1982. And uh, I'm going to... Night make- Crossing! I'm going to give the actors. Okay. Okay, so you've got Peter Gallagher, who you might yep. remember as Sandy Cohen. Yes. So it kind of connects with our our feature focus film, right. Peter's Body, because they yep. had uh, uh, Seth Cohen in right, the yeah. OC. Uh, Daryl Hannah. Yes, And Valor- Valerie... I fucking hate pronouncing unusual surnames. Valerie... Quin- Quinison? Quinison, I think it is. Hmm. This is one of her few film roles. In fact, she made this, which is probably about 21 in 82. She I actually re- passed away in a car crash in 89. Are all three of them... That's sad. Yes. Are all, th- all Yes, all the three of them, yes. Are all three of them Every on the poster. You fall in love, get down on my knees and They have a bizarre love triangle, sir. They have a bizarre love triangle. Yeah, I know this one. Yeah, I fucking know yeah. it. I was going to say three to tango, but that's the other one. Um, oh, yes. That's a weird one. <clears throat> Alright, just say that. Okay, it's Summer Lovers. Oh, of course. Yeah, this is like one of those films that I loved as a kid. All the wrong reasons, because 
watching it now. We've been watching it in the last couple of years. So it has been about probably five, six years since I watched it, but I watched it the other night and I'm in constant shock as to how much I enjoyed this film. Six or seven year old was completely oblivious to the fact that yeah. it was three people in a relationship. It's filled with steamy scenes, lots of nudity on beaches and things like that. The basic story is that you've got an American couple that have just graduated university and they go sort of like, you know, like, I don't know what you call post university kind of, it's not spring break, is it? They do that. After high school, they come spring break. Yeah. Anyway, so they go on a trip to Greece and they go to an island and that's where they meet up with uh, Valerie's character. And Peter has an affair with her to begin with, um, admits it to Daryl Hannah, and Daryl Hannah kind of goes, wants to meet Valerie in person uh, to work some sort of issues And she out. liked Valerie very much. They do, and yeah. then it just weirdly turns into like a threesome a where plot. they just party together. They, you know, either they're getting intimate or they're just having food fights or... All sorts of weird shit. There was a while there where threesome movies were like all the rage. Yeah, totally. I yeah. think this was one of the first of its kind, yeah, at least for like an American it. audience. Sure. Uh, and it was the well, third. Oh, it's well, funnily enough, the director's um, uh, Red Kleiser, is it? Is yeah. Name yeah. announced that directed Greece. Yeah. Funnily enough, this is set in Greece, spelt in uh-huh. different movies and different things. Yeah. Um, this is off the back of. Uh, I think he's a great director. Blue Lagoon. He did yeah. Pee Wee, Big Top Pee Wee. He did. And yeah. he did uh, the, another sequel to a franchise, The Honey I Blew Up the Kid. Yes. Yeah. 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 That was. I think that was. The, yeah. He did the second, second one. Second one. Yep. Yeah. Um, so aside from you know the strange sort of premise of the film and the fact that I did love it as like a six or seven year old. <laughs> yeah. Um, because it was part of that old roadshow video label. Well, that's so like me time. last week saying the last episode. I said I love uh, Blame It on Rio. When I was a yes, kid, I didn't realize yes. it's a sex movie. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah, you're kind of oblivious as stuff yeah. as a kid, and now you think, would I let my kids, my six or seven year old, watch yeah. this movie? I probably would too. Yeah. I don't know what Danny thinks of that. <laughs> now the soundtrack's fucking awesome because it's got like Elton John, Depeche Mode, Tina Turner, Prince, Heaven Seventeen, The Pointer Sisters, which I'm so excited to play like twice in the movie. Wow. But my favorite, and this is the one that I took away, probably the reason I love the movie so much because the trailers have the song in it, hmm. and I remember having to record the song off the TV on the cassette and I would listen to it on the way to school when mum would drive to school when I was like six or seven <laughs> and it's Chicago's hard to say I'm sorry oh my god Chicago. and that song still I love that song absolutely it's been in my head ever since um, another thing I was going to mention is it has a very interesting opening sequence where it kind of juxtaposes these images of old Greek people in very sort of um, iconic and traditional um, Greek locations against fucking you know hot blooded <laughs> sexual young you know folk gallivanting about half naked um, there is another scene that I actually found really funny that I don't think I'd ever noticed until now it's um, Peter Gallagher's getting ready to go out in the town with the two girls and then they're going out to dance in the discos and uh, you know he's just shaved and he throws some like aftershave on his face and then he kind of cups his balls briefly you don't really see it, but he puts <laughs> his hand down there and then suddenly has this shocked look as he looks in the mirror and it's like a very quick sort of thing that I had to rewind and go did he just put a bit of aftershave on his and I'm like, he did. Very unusual. Um, look, normally I'm talking about, you know, ladies' boobs. Mm. There is plenty of boobs and there's plenty of downstairs. In it. But I will mention something for the ladies. John? You do get to, yeah, you see Peter Gellin's dick. Um, you know, blink and you'll miss it. I um, haven't seen there. his dick before, so well, I'm fine. Well, you know, there's a first time for everything, dude. Mm. Maybe it's time you get acquainted with it. Um, but summer lovers, uh, yeah, look, it is fucking, it's not a great film by any stretch it's, it's a pretty shit film you yeah. don't really buy into the romance but the end is strangely moving and yeah it's a guilty as hell pleasure but I, I totally dig it yeah Summer Love yeah. is cool I want to see a fucking sequel I know she can't actually she can't come back she's Dead. it'd be like Weekend at Burns which is just <laughs> um, yeah maybe they just maybe they go maybe they're married and maybe they, you know like in a before sunrise before sunset before midnight they go, they go to Greece like they do before midnight. They go back again for their wedding anniversary and they take up. You can do it. Because at this time they get a dude. So it's just a bit weirder. Okay. Or we could yeah. do a crossover with Kings of Mykonos. And... Yes. Maybe it's Nick Giannopoulos. Yes. But they hook up with over there. <laughs> that would be great. Um, but anyway, so Summer Love is my guilty pleasure, sir. Well, excellent. I, I reckon I know it. I know the poster, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'll have to check it out just for the joke. Just, just for the joke. Say, I'm sorry. I just want. Oh, <laughs> okay, that's all you get. No, when it comes that's because I didn't nail it with the Jennifer's body it, thing. I thought I'd come and do the Chicago for When it, it comes to Chicago, mm. it's, I have to restrain myself. You yeah. know? It's like something that you just can't stop yourself from doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I think we should move on. Moving on. Moving on. Let's uh, give some stuff away. All right. Giveaways. Give 
Okay, so um, last week, the uh, last episode, I keep saying last week, it's been three weeks. It has been three weeks. Uh, the last episode's prizes never went off, and oh, therefore yeah. they jackpot. They jackpot. go they go on top of this week's. Uh, so last last time we had the colony, uh, we had Terminators and Nazis at the centre of the earth. Right. So they're up for grabs with this lot, and um, I've also got copies of Daddy's Little Girl, the Chris, oh, the Chris Sun, Sun film, film which awesome. is a great gnarly little His film. Daddy film. Daddy Absolutely, Daddy. and another film called Creep Van, which is Creep a very Van. divisive film. It's yes. a great concept. It's torn audiences in half as to whether it's fantastic or it's absolute shit. Right. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to throw those in together as well. So the awesome. easiest way that anyone can grab those is the same as always: send us a private message. Be the first person to send us the word jackpot. Right. And all of those are yours. Okay, I've got another giveaway. Well, we no, I've this. got giveaways galore here. Oh, you're doing another giveaway? Yeah, yeah okay, absolutely, okay, right. man. So, anyway, it's that easy. Okay. Um, next up, then, we've got Jennifer's Body. Copy of Jennifer's Body. Now, I've got a, I think we should do something special for this one. Because yeah. if you've been listening, then you just obviously heard us talk hmm. um, with the man himself, Simon Sherry. And like he talked about some of his favourite iconic posters you know, from growing up. We'll just name one. I reckon name one. And... Facebook is it, you know, private okay. Facebook. All right, so what we'll that. do here, we'll do that, okay? So yeah. you just send us a private message. But you can't get that. Be, no, no, no. You be, get the others. Be, no, be the first to right. send us the private message with one of those posters named, right? Yes, yes. Okay, they get Jennifer's body and... Oh, okay. They get... Oh, uh, we'll give them one of these. Yes. And they get a copy of Zombie Flesh Eaters, the Luke Shaw Full Suit Classic. Bam, straight. Awesome. And we've got another one, but we're not giving that away on this podcast. We'll do that on Facebook. Definitely. Right, that'll that'll be... Oh, man, we've got Do you have anything else to give away? No, no that's... I, a... I was just double-checking, because it's... Man, these people, this is fantastic. I know, they're man. getting... Bam, bam, bam. It's movies amazing. galore, man. Yeah. That is a little girl. It's such a great... Yeah. Fucking revenge horror film... And if you know, if you've ever seen Charlie's Farm, his new one, which is coming out soon, right, yeah. this is where it all began. Early beginnings. Early beginnings. So that's it. Uh, giveaways. Get onto it and snap them up. If they don't get snapped up, they just go into the jackpot. Jackpot. <laughs> jackpot. Man, <laughs> someone is going to make out like a king. A right. King of Mykonos. <laughs> king of Mykonos. So let's uh, let's wrap this fucker up and do what? some rapid fire. <laughs> What is the charge? Eating a meal? A succulent Chinese meal? So this is the part where we are, we just spin off a whole lot of movies that we've watched since the last episode, and we do them in rapid fire succession. Um, one other time, I reckon. Same as always. Yeah. Just a winning formula. You may as well kick it off. All right. Do you want to do like, like, do you want me to do 21st so that you can <laughs> catch yeah, up? No, that? nah, that's all right. You just tell me. I've got a solid eight films here. No, you more. tell me when you've blown your load and... Oh, I will. Oh, you'll know. Because <laughs> we'll hit the focus film. And then you'll know it's all over Red Road. Yeah, alright, cool. Um, well, that... Yeah, alright. So I started off with Clerks. That's a, when when we finished the last episode, we're going into Easter. Yes. So you'll notice the first sort of, you know, maybe ten films were kind of Easter related in some way or another. Yeah. Clerks is where I started. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm thinking too is more at set around Easter as well because remember they got the Easter Bunny in the mall. And they take place a day apart. Yes, that's right, because of the wake. Yeah. That's right, we discussed that mm. via Facebook. Yeah, um, right, privately. Yes, of course. Um, I've got Playing It Cool after your recommendation from the Valentine's Day special, which I enjoyed, but I didn't love, but I did enjoy it. I liked it. I did just I felt like it needed something more, but I did like it. And it's but good it was, Secret 7's not play a But did you find it was kind of like a deconstruction of the genre? Like a kind yeah, of, absolutely. It and, new... and it took kind of like that, uh, I guess that kind of neo-realist approach where it did lots of unusual sort of yeah. segues and unusual things which I did enjoy which kind of were a little reminiscent of um, something else I watched recently uh, it did oh yeah which I get to later Hector in the Search for Happiness alright cool alright All right, well then, yeah. I, then I watch more Rats oh cool yeah. uh, I watched Session 9 after we discussed uh, that filmmaker uh, what's his name uh, Brad Anderson yes because of Stonehurst Society mm, yeah about. yeah so Session 9 cool then I did uh, The Exorcist 2 The Heretic Oh, yeah, we discussed that last one. That was your obscurity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I, I, I went... Didn't include it in the list. No, but because it was... Oh, because you went back and watched it again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can't stop. You're a No, and because... The, I'm going to go straight to my next one before right. you, because then I watched The Exorcist 3 twice in a row. That's right. I saw like, it on Facebook. Literally yeah. finished it. And then re Started it again, again. Because I, I uh, just forgot how fucking much I love it. Right, excellent. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Uh, okay, so I did Cocoon. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And then I did Dominion, prequel to The Exorcist. Right, and then I did City of the Living Dead. Oh, very no cool. Mm-hmm. I did that one not too long ago. Yeah, I think I watched it about two years ago, but yeah. I fucking... Oh, yeah, okay, it's so it's such stuff. a weird... And then I moved on to Chasing Amy. Uh, then I did a documentary called 
Killer Legends, which is on Netflix about urban legends, essentially. Cool. I did Dogma. Can you see a theme of... Yeah, I see something yeah. like common reoccurrence <laughs> yeah. there. Particular motif in your view. Yes. Uh, then I did Insurgent. Oh, cool. Um, I did Critters 2, which is a great Easter film. It all takes place at Easter oh, because okay. of the Easter eggs getting mixed up with the Critters eggs. Right, that's right. And yeah, the Easter yeah, bunny yeah. gets, like, butchered. Oh, no, that's the one where uh, one of the guys in Space Alien takes the form of a uh, centerfold model in that one. Is that right? And oh, yeah. There's staples that's, in his It's kind of stomach. in both, the yeah. first two. There's a, right. the I that take the hot chip. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's, that's a Mick Garris film. That's his first director, yeah. uh, director film, I think. Very cool. Yeah. Um, then I did The Canal, which is uh, British, uh, Irish, Irish horror film. Yeah, oh, it's out cool. through Pinnacle, but it's on Netflix Australia. Oh, cool. Um, what did I do next? Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Uh, then I did The Town That Dreaded Sundown, the 2014, which still hasn't had a release here. Roadshow's got it because they've got it rated, but it's shit called it's got half. Yep. But it's only gone VOD in the US, we've had limited theatrical in the UK, so watch on Netflix. There's US. been some new artwork for that popping up Yeah, because it's coming out July, I think, on DVD, and then Fucking up October on Blu ray in the States. Right, okay. God knows when then I moved, Yeah, well, then I moved on to Clerks 2, finished off the whole Kevin Smith uh, yeah. jersey thing. Uh, then I did Cropsy, a documentary from the makers of Killer mm-hmm. Legends, mm-hmm. which was also on Netflix, and I was just in a doco. Yeah, mood. just Cropsy was on a roll. And then I did Metal Skin, the Jeffrey Wright film. Uh, cool, yes, yes. Which I like. I think that's a really it's a good follow up to Romper Stomper. Yeah. Um, and before Romper Stomper, he did Loverboy, and all three of those had that yeah. same. Back then, like Melbourne in particular, was presented in such a grimy, dank, and, grimy, yeah, bluish, bluish looking. kind of industrial yeah. way. All filmed yeah. over in Altona or whatever. So it's great. Yeah, yeah I mean, and even now like, they're fucking so different. Yeah. And gentrified as hell, those And I was places. watching it, and I, I, I enjoyed it more than I remember liking it. And yeah. I just thought, Melbourne's never presented like this anymore. You no, know? Like no, even, no, even Malcolm and Big Steel, they were yeah, all presented yeah, in a very really gray. specific and kind of way. David Parker called on that when he did the Q&A. He yeah. said... Remember that Francis Ford Coppola had called him to shoot the pilot for the yeah, Outsider that's, series. I want you right. to make it look like that. He goes, I can't make LA look like Melbourne. That's right. Um, he goes, I don't care. Just come and shoot my But pilot. isn't it weird that filmmakers these days can't recapture that? No, it's true. It's true. It's odd. Yeah, I even think, you know, even in the, the film late made... 80s, early 90s, they were still doing it, like Death in Brunswick and stuff. You oh, know? yeah. Really drowned out sort of colour. Yeah. But, All right, moving on. Uh, so was it me? Yep. Oh, I watched Hot Tub Time Machine 2 because... It went digital in the US, so it's available on iTunes. I'm so watch. jealous of you, man. I did because I, uh, it's, it kept getting bumped in Australia. It was supposed to come, they were yeah. supposed to come out boxing down the States, then all, sorry, Christmas, and yeah. we were getting boxing back. They pushed it out to Feb, then they pushed it out to March, and now they've removed it off their release schedule. I don't think it's going to go theatrical in Australia. I think yeah, it's on the Hoyt's Day website. Now, oh, there you go. I wouldn't trust it as far as a control for it. Okay. Um, so I don't know. But so, it yeah. only went up on the Hoyt's website this week. Oh, okay, so it's got yeah. a new date then. Well, maybe it will come out. Okay. Anyway, I watched the. VOD version was it good? of iTunes. Yeah, I enjoyed it, except the only one that was available for VOD is the unrated version, All right. which clearly has scenes that you can tell was shot just to be in an unrated version. Right. But on the whole, um, Funny. Yeah, it was okay. It's not a patch on the original, cool. but it was still enjoyable. Cool. Then I watched Flipped, the Rob Reiner film. Oh, yeah. I Great. My really good. I got that in my Netflix queue. I'm going to cool. watch that. Do it. Uh, then I watched the, uh, the Woman Who Wasn't There documentary about a woman that was claiming that she was uh, in uh, during 9-11 one of the World Trade Centers and it's a whole documentary on her and how she's basically um, just lied her way through it and wow. made up and it's awful because she was part of an organization to cancel survivors and talk to families of people who were lost and yeah she was just you've been on a documentary me. spree I have I have yeah the woman who wasn't there cool then I took my daughter to see The Duff uh, yep. I loved it it was good yeah. <laughs> it was really good yeah. very similar kind of like Mean Girls kind very of much yeah. um I actually probably enjoyed it more than Mean Girls, to be honest with you. Mean oh, Girls cool. is a great film. It is great. Yeah. No, um, I'm looking forward to watching that one. I watched Going Clear, Scientology of the Prison of the League. Looking forward to, I'm Doco. looking forward to that, man. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah cool. it's really interesting. Uh, Doco, I, the next one I watched was Life Itself again. Uh, Roger Ebert's uh, story. Doco. Yeah. yeah, in fact, I was just reading quite a few of Roger Ebert's reviews last week have you, on Ebert.com. Have you picked up on my style of criticism is very much sort of channeling his style of criticism? I definitely use him as my inspiration for how yeah, I write that, because I always sense. try to find the positives before the negatives. Yeah, he's absolutely. Notorious for that. Oh, absolutely. And put perspective. Sometimes you can't tell. And context. Doesn't, doesn't like, like a film until you kind of get toward the end. You're like, okay. 
Yeah, but he also he puts so um, much rich history. Well, on the one he well. he also um he puts context into his reviews. I mean, there's a famous argument with him and Gene Siskel reviewing Benji the Hunter, uh, yes. where he's saying, "Well, you've got to watch it as a kid. Yeah, absolutely. otherwise you've got no right to criticize it." From the, you know the wrong yeah. perspective. And he he never really believed in the star rating, despite yeah. the fact he had to resort to it in yeah. his printed reviews. But on yeah. television, it was always thumbs up. Thumbs up. And then another thing that I really liked about him is, obviously, before he passed, he managed to revisit a lot of films that had an impact on him and revisited yep. them like, you know, 10 years on since the last review or however long and came back and it would be his opinions on films. And he had no qualm in coming back and if he enjoyed it more this yeah. time around, saying, reevaluating. Yeah, absolutely. Which Making I really amendments. Liked. Yeah, like, that was. I, stuck in that review. When he died, I wrote a big tribute, which is on the website, yeah. you can read it. And I mentioned that, that he was never afraid to go back on his work. Yeah. Yeah. And say, look, I made a mistake. You know, with yeah, the, the, yeah. the course of time, it's changed, and you know that is a great film. That's it, yeah. Uh, then I watched a documentary as well, which was on <laughs> Netflix called Atari Game Over, which oh, is all about. That sounds good. It's, it's about. Is this the buried ones? Yes, yeah, yeah. ET burial and uh, the excavation. Fucking, actually, really, yeah, really solid. It's only like sixty-five minutes. Wicked, I'm onto that. It's still good. I remember, yeah, really good. I remember being announced, and I just forgot about it. Then I watched um, a science fiction one called Battle for Sky Ark, which was. Oh, Terrible. Uh, yeah, I read your review for this. Shocking. Yeah, sort of, they didn't know which audience to go for. No. It had an element of kids, but then it was too adult. A big was, element yeah. of kids. It felt like one of those sort of, you know, those those afternoon school TV adventure shows, you know. Right. But then there's some really dark context in there. And okay. Uh, yeah, just a really strange absurd mm. film. I didn't like it, so. Okay. Uh, then I watched Banshee Chapter, which I'd heard really good things about, and I watched it. Underwhelmed? I was underwhelmed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It started off promising, and then it has a Hunter S. Thompson like character in it. And it's you know what so I ridiculous. liked it because when that I Hunter S. Thompson character was stupid. Yeah, like now, this why I do that. Well, I liked it because I watched it before <coughs> before the fanfare, right? Yeah. Um, because then it did get this whole ooh scariest film you know mm. in a long time. But yeah. second time I watched it, it was no video. It just didn't have that impact. No. It started off really promising, but as soon as fucking Hunter S. Thompson came into it, I thought, what the fuck? <laughs> well, then the next one I watched was um, A Thousand Times Good Night with Julia Binoche. Fantastic. Uh, she plays the um yeah. she plays the photojournalist that is that a recent one or? Yeah, yeah and that's a really fucking solid film I love Julie I've got so a new one coming out saw with that. Kristen Stewart looks yep. fucking solid and Chloe Moran's Grace yep. or Grace Moran's uh, then I watched Paradise yeah. which we discussed cool I watched Interstellar then I watched another documentary called And the Oscar Goes To which was on Netflix which was really a really solid watch the history of the Academy Awards and a lot of behind the scenes stories you're cramming that fucking brain of yours man <laughs> yeah, well, it's lots of information <laughs> and then I watched Furious 7 uh, then I watched Before Sunset and then I watched Black Sea then I watched one of the best films of this year It Follows Excellent. I haven't seen it yet. It's amazing. On I'll my see list. It the second time. Reckon I'll see week. it this week. Mm. Um, then I watched Insidious Chapter 2. We're going to watch Avengers Age of Ultron. Wow. And then I watched Wild Card with Jason Statham, which oh, I kind of yeah, really dug. Yeah, I thought it was it's actually pretty favourable for Yeah. That went straight to, straight to home. It's an interesting film. Yeah, it's, you take it with a grain of salt, but it's, yeah. it's a good vehicle. He apparently championed that one for years before it got right. made. He's the one that pushed it. And okay. um, yeah, it's good. Short, too. Nice short oh, run good. of time. Maybe I'll Stanley look. Tucci is fantastic as a crime boss, man. Right, awesome. I love yeah. Stanley Tucci. Uh, then I watched Eternal Sunshine at the Spotless Mind. Nicely oh, done. Incredible. Movie. Amazing. Then I watched Nightcrawler. Yes, which you loved, yeah. Loved it. Yeah, yeah. I, I read your review for it. It yeah. took me a long time to get to it, and I finally did, mate. Really, everything about it that they wrote and said, amazing. Right, true yeah, for you. Absolutely. Uh, then I watched Casablanca. Oh my god. How good classic. is Casablanca? It is a classic. I was talking to you just before you watched it, yeah, saying yeah, the yeah, scenes absolutely. with the silhouettes. Yeah. Like, there's entire scenes where you don't see the actors, but you see their yeah. shadows. And the, the storytelling is fucking great. Yeah, it's really well, really well done. The, um, you know, there's, uh, you know, the music motif for the as time goes by that's played throughout it there's a 10 minute flashback mm. a 10 minute flashback that's where it's placed in the film where it needs to be um, and that's the only thing that makes but isn't it amazing like, like, but it's so bizarre it's like a three act structure yeah. the but back then itself. like you didn't have to rely on flashy stuff to tell a story you no, just no, had well, like... that's the other thing like, most of the camera work for the most part is quite simple but fucking Humphrey Bogart yeah. hits it out of the park amazing but they don't waste a frame. And how like, iconic they, is as time goes by? Like, absolutely. Like yeah, no, it really stuck with me. And, and in fact, it made me, I said to Danny afterward, you really have to watch a few more classics. So we were hoping maybe to get, I just got, I just, and you'll see it in the collection update when I do it next week, I just got the deluxe fucking season came. Great. On Blue Great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. well, I recommend the shop around the corner. I watched that recently. Ah, uh, yeah, we discussed that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you've got mail, the original. Yep. All right, so then I went and watched the, um, 
final cut of Albert Pune's Road to Hell, which I'm you hoping... Uh, I, I do love it. I've got a real did you do a review for, for Scream Magnet? Yes, I did. Yeah. I wrote a review for, for Fake Shemp mm. back Some when time I, ago. I saw a previous cut. This right. is the final cut. It's much stronger. Yeah, I enjoyed yeah. the last cut. This one's really good. And I did, I did a review for Scream Magazine. But um, we're hoping to screen that soon. Oh, Whether it's a private screening, which I, I suspect it might be. But right. one way or the other, we'll get it out there. Cool. Then I watched uh, Hector in the Search for Happiness, which is a bit of a poor man's secret life of Walter Moody. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. Way too long and not great. And Simon Pegg, unless it's a script written by yep. Edgar Wright, he should only be playing the sport <laughs> roles. <laughs> right. Uh, then I watched the interrogation show of Cooper. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's Is that different from the one you saw in Vegas? Um, this car. Look, I, I had to... Because... Um, I got sent the D, the Blu-ray, yeah. and there's a slight sync issue in the last act where the right, okay. um, the voices sort of go off a bit. Yeah, yeah. And so I stopped watching at that point and just said, "Can I get another copy because this one's not okay. right?" Because I want to screen that as well. So yeah, I need to have a good one. Um, so yeah. Yeah, oh, no, I don't know if the end has been changed because that will make a big difference. Right. Um, okay. So I'll get back to you on that. Okay. Uh, then I watched Before Midnight. I completed the, the cool, Before very cool. trilogy. Nice. And that was probably the for me that was probably the weakest of the three. Yeah, I, I, I agree. don't like the woman that Julia uh, becomes. Yeah, she's like a real her. bitch. She's a bitch well, she and unreasonable. Bags, and he's just so such a romantic. Do you know what really that everything. bothered me so much because I thought she was completely unreasonable and she was oh, really okay. mean to him. Yeah, and she was. She really yeah. goes out for blood, basically calling him a hack that he's not good at anything yeah. he's trying to do. And as a writer, he's got nothing on Henry Miller. And I thought to myself, I said to Melissa, "Am I being sexist for taking his side?" She's like, "No, she's an she absolute bitch, into a total like, bitch." And it's heartbreaking because he does everything. You know, well, he's just constantly coming up and romantic scenarios. And you can't help but feel, though, that they want you to be on her side. Like, I yeah, felt I like they were making this... I know. And what was side. the deal with her fucking topless for, like, yeah. 10 minutes? I know. It was distracting. It was. I, I mean, they were I trying to be... Watch that. They were trying to be real, I suppose. I know, I didn't like it, because I think that's the other thing that... It's always been, you know, some sexual connotations and a little bit of language. But that was just too much yeah. of that on screen. You know so what I did long. You know what I did love about it was the, the opening scene of the airport with the kid. Like that I, was such a beautiful moment. Yeah, that's. I wish Boyhood had more of that. Like I yeah. didn't love Boyhood because yeah. I think Boyhood was, it really dwelled on the duller moments. It didn't have the strong dialogue, sure. that it, you know, before trilogy. Yeah, but yeah, this was the weakest entry. For me. I agree. The, the I strongest think, is the second, in my love, opinion. Yeah, yeah, I think mine's Sunrise. I think mine's cool. the, the Genesis story. The, Early relationship. All right, moving along. I and think he didn't um, look better. He didn't. He looked less like a junkie. <laughs> he didn't look like a pedophile. No. <laughs> um, I then went and watched the uh, Slinger, the director's cut of Cyborg. Right. And then I watched Paddington, which I strongly recommend. Yeah, it's I on really my list, man. It. It's on my list. Really good. Um, then I watched the Asylum title Princess of Mars, which was later retitled John Carter of Mars. Right. With okay. uh, Sebastian Antonio Junior, whatever his name is. Oh, um, the guy from the big hit. Yeah, Antonio Sambato yeah, Jr. That's the one. My girlfriend, when I was 16, had a poster of him up on the wall, and I was a, quite a puny 16 year old. Oh, much no. Than I am now. Quite I'd have to stare at that high and some hunk of meat on the wall, and I'd be mm. like, oh, yeah, why is she with me? Yes. So, yeah. All anyway, right. so I watched Summer Lovers, as we discussed, as the cool. pleasure. I went on to Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, and No Good, A Very Bad Day. I'm looking forward to watching that. I liked it a lot. Uh, then I watched Class of 1984. Mark L. Lester cool. with the story and the screenplay was co-written uh, but the story was uh, Tom Holland yeah cool um, that, that, that movie's great but I will mention one thing and I mentioned this to Danny when we watched this this film's a fucking classic and I love it mm. it's iconic artwork and everything I said but there is a rape scene and it's you know, kind <laughs> of upsetting and that was the hardest it's, a, it's upsetting to watch yeah. but um, I can't recall you know, it yeah it's pretty brutal and that's the main I guess Crux. the main drive yeah. for him to get revenge Said students, but so long as it, but, but so long it, there's a serves a purpose to push the, the, the narrative the forward. forward. And also, I will mention it does have Michael J. Fox's first yes, appearance as Michael Fox. It doesn't have like a bowl haircut. Or he does yeah. apparently hated the haircut, so, <laughs> so he looked like a geek. But that's what he was playing. Uh, anyway, then I introduced my 13 year old son to American Pie. Beautiful. Yeah. Nothing like the first slice of pie. Much and then we, it was watched, <laughs> then, then we all watched. Oh yeah, would have been. <laughs> Uh, is that the one where Jinx, uh, Stifler drinks the jizz? Yeah, the, because the, the, the... right before we watched it, <laughs> my son brought out a cup of tea, and he took the Stifler and said, dude, that looks a lot like pale ale to me. Uh, right? uh, and he had no idea what I was talking about, and then as we were watching the movie, you practically spat it. That's so funny. Yeah, Time. anyway. Uh, then we watched uh, Jennifer's Body, and that's where I am. 
Cool. So, yeah, All right. Twenty films. Boom. Oh. No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> then we watched a really cool one, The Odd Life of Timothy Green. With, I haven't um, seen that. Jenna, it's Jenna got Darla. a in it too, like Joel Edgerton. Joel Edgerton. Like, yeah, yeah. I fantastic. Seen it. And yeah. that's once again another Disney film that yeah. takes that sort of you know, edgy kind of different direction to what a lot it's of. Supposed to be quite films. visual too. Yeah. Very, very yeah. much. Um, then I watched Kingdom of Metal, which is a director's cut of Albert King's Nights. Right. Then I watched Friday the Thirteenth, the final chapter. Don't ask me why. No, it's because we were discussing part four. But that's not Facebook. that's not why I watched it though. Like I just well, you never said what your favorite part four was. By the way, you engaged this huge conversation. <laughs> I, involved, I even went to bat for Toxie, the Toxic Adventure two that seemingly everyone fucking hates. I love that. I, I no, I, I stuck up. I, I was in oh, did there. Did you with jump you? in there? Did you for that one? I did. Oh shit! I didn't go back. And or maybe I just okay. looked at them and thought, no, Jared's right. It's, yeah, it's good. It's like yeah, you know. But uh, so, what was your favorite part four of the franchise? Fuck, was... man, I have no idea. I'm glad that you brought that up and you didn't have something. You're <laughs> <laughs> just like, I'm just going to throw it out there. What? No, there was something. It wasn't Superman for from... the quest for peace. Was that the quest for peace? Was that part four? The weakest. That was the catalog. Oh man, you no, I really actually I like Rambo four a lot. Rainbow Four was cool. Yeah. I think I dug that more the second time around as well. Definitely. Yeah. Um, no, That's look, good. I maybe it was because I was watching that. Mm. I don't know. Something was on my mind and I just threw it out yeah. there because I thought, no, we haven't put much on our wall this week. I'm yeah, gonna... that was good. It got people talking. It did. Um, what did I watch then? The Computer War Tennis Shoes. Oh, that's with Jeff Bridges, isn't it? No, that's with um, Kurt Russell. Oh, Kurt Russell, of course. Yeah, yeah sorry. That Kurt Cameron in the remake. Man, I didn't realise there was a remake. With Kurt Cameron, yeah. Wow. And the director of that one is, um... Fuck. He's done something very big recently and I can't recall what it is. Lasman Trier? <laughs> um, <laughs> I saw that Lasman Trier is going to start drinking again so oh. he can uh, make good art again. <laughs> right, drink up, sir. Right, and then I moved on to The Hobbit Battle of Five Armies because I missed, oh, yeah, I missed it. At the end. I didn't like it at all. You didn't like it? No, I didn't mind it. I no, it right. I didn't like it at all. And no, I did enjoy the first two. I still think The Hobbit should have been one yeah, what four hour film. Yeah. No. Two movies, maybe. No, because, I mean, you made three movies out of three books for the original. Yeah, no, and no, at least they were shorter than The Hobbit movies. Only about 120 minutes each. Yeah, I still had I didn't mind The Five it, Armies, but it was pretty much like an 80 minute Battle. Fight, yeah. yeah no, I didn't and like the, it. the start of the film is pretty much the continuation of the last 20 minutes of the yeah. event last I time. thought the, the first two Hobbits were actually quite strong. I thought right. the narrative in that was really good. Yeah. Um, whereas this had no narrative. It was just, you know, pretty a, mean, much a means guard, to an let's end. Guard this fucking and they originally place. were going to make two films out of it. And they decided yeah. to split it into three. And you money, can tell money, that money. that's right. That's what this one was. So yeah. anyway, then I moved on to American Pie 2. Oh, awesome. Did you watch that with Sean? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Actually, now I think of it because my I next... think is my favourite. Ooh, oh, I, I like to watch the the porno super glued to his hand. Yeah, and he's on the roof. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yeah, no, it's good. I Actually, met Sean William Scott at the premiere. Lucky we had the bastard. premiere when I was working in uh, Grady Union. Lucky bastard. Met him inside my road trip. DVD. He's just announced um, Goon Two. Oh wow, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay, cool, very cool. Um, but no, now my next film on the list is why I mentioned Part Fours because right. we watched Mad Max One. <coughs> and it got me uh, thinking about Fury Road right? because we yes. decided to introduce the kids to this yep. Sean has already but watched now, it with me but Fury Road will be like Mad Max what four yeah no but in terms of sequential order does it, it falls somewhere between no, does I, it come directly after I, I believe what I'm, what I'm, or is it I think it's after I think it's after it is after I'm led to okay. believe it's a continuation right, of the right. canon and because it's got the Interceptor in it, though, which is yeah. throwing me off. And okay, well, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and yeah. see, but it looks like fucking good. Dude, I'm so psyched yeah. for this movie. Um, May 14th, come at yeah. me. Yeah. And then, Bro. look, I, I went to the cinemas and saw The Age of Adeline, which blew me away. Yeah. I thought it was great. Excellent. Um, better than I thought. Excellent. Then I watched Plan 9. Yes. I put a review up on the Screen Horror Magazine in the UK. Yeah. yeah. I didn't like it at all, man. No, in no. fact, I hated it. Oh yeah, I know. But you were so kind to the review, like because you try to fix some good things, as you mentioned before, the way you try and write reviews. Yeah, and you, even, I think you even called to well, that. You said, "Look, I'm trying to fix something good, yeah. and there's some okay cinematography." <laughs> and it, the first scene opens well, but then the shitty titles come in. And yeah, you like, no, can't nail the titles. You're paying attention, man. Yeah, no, um, but I still, I only, I don't know how I'm going to watch it. I can't force Danny to watch that and no I don't know way. if I have the strength to do it by myself so mm. I'm going to have to do it I should have waited yeah. for you for that one <laughs> I'm glad that's on well, our it, focus it, well, it, it was a struggle yeah. man it was a struggle right. um, 
And then I watched A Good Marriage, the Stephen King one, which yeah, we've been advertising. So, yeah, you've said it's really good. Yeah, well, I, I resisted it for a while yeah. because we've been advertising. I didn't want to yeah, look biased, yeah. but I'm glad I liked it because now I don't yeah. feel so bad. But And Stephen King actually wrote the screenplay. He wrote the screenplay. Right. It's his, I think it's the best screenplay he's actually written. Awesome. Because he refrains from all the goofy stuff he usually puts in. You know, he's always okay. got a side character that's kind of quirky. Yeah. You know, oh, this... Oh. Hey, honey... This ATM just told me to get fucked. I just called me an asshole. Yeah, yeah, that kind of shit, man. Or they say, like, they have turns of phrases that are kind of quirky, you know. Right. Um, anyway, but no, it's a good... All right, I'm looking forward to that. It's and a Anthony backwards... Anthony LaPaglia? Anthony LaPaglia. Yeah, Joan, Australian actor. Joan Allen? And Joan Allen. And Stephen Lang. And it's a very... From Avatar. You know, Stephen Lang's the military man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's good in it. Um, But it's a very backwards kind of thriller. Like, it's unconventional. Kind of okay, it really starts, it up, starts really fucked up and scary yeah. and then ends up very placid. So it's sort of oh, backwards, okay, backwards. Yeah. Kind of like irreversible in a way. Yeah, but the story goes forward. Yes. But the, the oh, suspense okay, but goes backwards. Right. Oh, that's really No, but it works. It works. Okay, I, want, I want you to watch it and let me know what you thought. Yeah, okay, okay. I hope I didn't build up too much. Um, then I watched Adrenaline Fear the Rush the director's awesome. cut and finished up on our focus film Jennifer's Body Jennifer's Body excellent that, dude. That, that brings us to the end of another podcast yes and um, it's time to wrap it up awesome well thanks so much for uh, being so supportive of my drug habit on this particular show because I am there's been a lot of sorts of, lot of strepsils and everything you sound yeah. like Ferris Bueller yeah totally <coughs> so <coughs> just gonna stop and look around. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So thank you for supporting my. You have it. I have it. I will be heading home shortly and hopefully indulging in a film before I go to bed. Because last night I had a weird sleep. Wait. wait Very fucking late by the time you get home, my friend. Uh, yep. That's okay. Great. So let's wrap it up. And um, I want to give a quick shout out to one particular podcast that takes place in Vancouver. It's called the Generation X Wing Podcast. These are the guys. I saw them. They they talked uh, talked. Uh, yeah, they did. They, yeah. they spruiked us, and I thought I'd spruik them back because cool. um, Josh Whittle is a good friend of mine. I went to school with him. He's a filmmaker in his own right. Ah, uh, right. Exactly. He put us onto all the artwork that we have for our website. So you went to school with him with uh, Neil Blumka. <laughs> Blumka. Blumka. <laughs> Sorry, I threw that one in for Stew Boy. Stew, Stew Boy, Lordy, um, Lordy. How do we sound? Yeah. <laughs> 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 and um, look, we've got to uh, give the usual yes. mention to the Daniel McDonald sound design for the wonderful underscore that we have playing right now. Thank you, Daniel. And uh, that is it. Um, definitely thanks, Simon Sherry, for joining us earlier on. Yes, absolutely. It's been what a fun. guy. He's got to come back. Cause we'll have him back for a whole episode absolutely. because we could just keep talking. We, we just talk with that guy, not yeah. stop. Yep. So he loves his movies. He's fantastic. a talented guy. And he's so sexy on the microphone. Smooth. Yeah, it puts us to shame. Yeah, cool. All right, man. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll close out with a little number. <laughs> the trees. Keep going. Now that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! 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 Ta-da!